no visible signs of fire. Looks more like signal flares. Gonna say this is probably a false alarm or a prank. Copy that. You're clear to proceed. Ah, I told you this was a prank. I don't see any fire. <sighs> who in their right mind finds this kind of thing funny? People who enjoy causing a commotion. Huh. Hey, check it out. What in the hell? Hmm. Oh, shit. Ugh. Can't we just report this one in and go? Come on, man. You know we can't just leave this be. In Japan, 99.9% .9 of criminal trials end with a guilty verdict. That makes the odds for a defense lawyer to get an acquittal about 10,000 to 1. But I beat those odds on a murder case. It's a hell of an achievement. Unfortunately, it came with a price. The death of an innocent woman. The shadows of truth escape the courtroom, and when they do, Someone has to drag them back into the light. The reality is, the law is neither as perfect or as fair as it's supposed to be. So I've made it my job to give those without a voice a chance to be heard. Hey, uh, talk. What? Man, I'm bored. It sucks. How about you hit me with some trivia then? That would pass the time. Oh, I mean, come on, man. You never know how long a stakeout's gonna last. Even Keiko chan's losing her mind. I'm sure she is. Give me a sec to come up with a zinger, okay? <laughs> Okay, sure. You think up a tough question, and I just leave you to your thoughts. Wait a damn minute! How does that even solve this problem then, man? Um, Kaito-san? I don't think I'm really in the mood for trivia at the moment. Okay, fine. We gotta spice this up somehow. So, Keiko-chan, this internet boy, How'd you end up on the raw end of a scam like this? How is this spicing things up? Besides, we don't even know for sure if it was a scam yet, right? Exactly. Kaito-san here is just jumping to conclusions. It'll be fine, Keiko-san. Don't worry. At Yagami Detective Agency, we make sure our clients' hearts are at the heart of our business. <laughs> That's so great to hear. I know I hired just the right people. Damn straight. Sunshine and rainbows with us. Kosuke kun did say he always eats fast food for lunch. Yeah, but after 20 minutes, I think he'd be done by now. I don't know. He always makes me worry, even his eating habits. Say, Keiko chan. How'd a sweet girl like you get roped in by some dude off the net, huh? I wouldn't call it that at all. Would you believe me if I said we took it slow at first? I'd say his patience paid off. Maybe it's hard for you to see, but he is a caring guy. So he drags you to the shadiest dive in Kamurocho and calls it a date? <laughs> Sounds like a real catch. 
He was just trying to impress me. He, he couldn't have known what would happen. Then he sticks his own girl with a bill? Dickhead doesn't begin to describe I mean, he is still in college. And besides, he said if we didn't pay, they'd call the Yakuza to collect. So they bled you out of 800 grand, 400 still to go, for a total of 1.2 mil. It'd be practically impossible to pay all that one lump sum. Exactly. That's where Kosuke-kun's idea came in. He said I could make some easy money working one of those clubs. Yeah, I'll bet he did. Did he say anything about working with those Yakuza from the start? Guy meets girl, they go out, he racks up a tab. Next thing you know, she's on the market to pay it off. Same shit, different day in this town. Now you're just jumping to conclusions. Besides, a business taking advantage of people like that would have gotten shut down in no time, right? <sighs> Afraid not. Some lines the law just can't cross until it's too late. But I do owe you some credit for turning to a man like Genda-sensei. He's been defending the city a long time now, and his team's rock solid. Yeah, and when things get too dirty for them, Genda calls in guys like us to clean it up. Good for you, I guess. Listen, Keiko-chan. I hate to be so blunt, but Kosuke's totally been gaming you from the get-go. Until you see that for yourself, there's not much we can do for you. Ain't that right, Tuck? Well, let's not jump the gun, Kaito-san. We don't have proof of anything yet. Speaking of which, there's our man of the hour. kosuke -kun. I'm gonna need to follow him. You two stay here. Hopefully we'll get this all cleared up. <laughs> About time we saw some action. Careful out there, Tuck. Hey, Tuck, you read me? You gonna be okay tailing this guy? Or do you need the detective basics manual? Kaido-san, please. I could tail him in my sleep. <laughs> the manual says to keep your eyes open, actually. Gotta be careful here. It's okay. Kaito-san, you made contact with a new face. I'm gonna get a shot as evidence. Good call. Kaito-san, just sent that photo to your phone. Any sage advice? Yeah, I see it. It's a perfect shot, buddy. 
So, who's Kosuke's new friend? Any ideas? That's what I'm gonna try and find out. Be in touch. Man, I haven't seen you in forever, Sakura-chan. It's because you barely show up to the club events, Kosuke-senpai. I probably wouldn't have seen you today either if I hadn't mistaken someone else for you. Sorry, I've just been so busy. I know, I gotta make time for the club. I know you've got a busy schedule, but it's not the same without you, senpai. A lot of girls quit because you stopped showing up, you know? Oh, damn, that sucks. Uh, guess I better make some effort, huh? Yeah, that'd be great. But senpai, while we're on the subject... Yeah? I hope you won't do anything that'll get those girls' hopes up either. I don't know if you know this, but the girls had a few big fights, actually. All that anger could boil over in your direction at any time is all I'm saying. Yeah? Wouldn't want that. I'll be careful. Well, I've got to get going to my next thing. Okay. Make sure you stop by the club, huh? Wait a sec. That's Yagami. He's the detective who reported Anaki's affair to his old lady. Yeah, fuck that guy! Anaki got so pissed, he took it out on us! Still fucking sore about it! Yo, Yagami! Just your luck to be passing by us today. You're a dead man, bro! Man, this neighborhood never changes, does it? Yeah! <laughs> 
Yeah, I need to get more cash. Guess I'll stop by the Popo. Kaito-san, I just sent you a new shot. Take a look. Yeah, I see it. Not half bad. Huh? What the...? Yo, Tak, be real with me. Kosuke's guilty as all hell, right? That's way too much money to just cruise around with. A withdrawal for any amount wouldn't prove anything. Gotta be fair here. right now. He's just wandering around town. Pretty much killing time like your average college student. Any idea where he's headed? Good question. Actually, he just ducked into a building. I'm going after him. Hey, buddy. You new here? You can't just go waltzing in. And why not? Because I said so. That's why. Now beat it. Hey, didn't I tell you to leave? Don't make me call the cops on your ass. Isn't that a little excessive? All I wanted was to look around. Well, there's nothing to see here, so go look somewhere else. There's definitely more to this place than meets the eye. Suspicious. <laughs> Suspicious. Uh-huh. Hey. Suspicious.
Yo, Doc. Hanging in there, buddy? Uh, kinda hit a wall here. What's that supposed to mean? You didn't lose the guy, did you? Look, my hands are tied right now, but everything's under control. Oh, uh, hey guys. Didn't mean to interrupt. Hey, who's this clown? First time I've ever seen him. Oh, you see, I'm, uh, Kosuke's guest. Guess I took a wrong turn somewhere. Who the hell's Kosuke? Ah, uh, that's the kid who keeps hanging around. You'd think he'd have wised up by now. Wait, then he'd be on the fifth floor. So what are you doing down here? Seriously, it's like you got me lost on purpose. You mind, uh, pointing me in the right direction? Take the stairs to the fifth floor, then head all the way back. Your friend will be in the tatami room. The tatami room? Oh, of course. <laughs> Should've known this wasn't it. Before you go, I'm gonna need to verify your membership. Kosuke give you a card? Uh, he should have? Shoot, I can't seem to find it. <laughs> Not so. Well, now we got a problem. Sorry. I'll be more careful next time, promise. There won't be a next time, dumbass! We don't carry cards here! Now who the hell are you, and how'd you get in? Better start talking! Ugh, here we go. Tell me, what's Kosuke doing in the tatami room? We're not telling you shit! I'm still in that building with Kosuke-kun. Had a little run-in with some watchdogs. And apparently, Kosuke's no stranger. Right now, he's in their tatami room. Oh, he is, huh? What do you think he's up to? Well, a betting man would say he's gambling. If it's a members-only building with goons posted on every corner, I'm telling you now, the tatami room ain't no tea shop. Huh. Not a bad theory at all. It's like you're speaking from experience, Kaito-san. <laughs> You've got questions? I've got answers. I said we have an intruder! I don't know how he got in! Say what? <laughs> what happened? You there? Tell me something, Tog. Why is a college kid hanging out with a bunch of gambling lowlifes? We're seeing this kid's true colors now, if you ask me. Yeah, it's hard to argue with that. But let's give him the benefit of the doubt until we catch him red-handed. Innocent until proven guilty. <laughs> Is that some lawyer creeping back into your detective work? Well, whatever. Just don't get yourself caught. Unless you want to fight on your hands. Believe me, I don't. Alright, let's go.
No. Got a minute? I heard we got an intruder in here. Let the others know for me. Yeah, okay. Almost there. That's a good boy. Hey! Don't just stand there. Shut the door already. Happen. Come on, folks, who wants another round? Everyone place their bets? Now or never! You know you're on a losing streak, Kosuke. Why not be a good little boy and go home? Are you kidding? I was just getting warmed up. Huh? Didn't know you were such a high roller. Where are you, uh... Getting all that cash from, anyway. <laughs> Can't say too much about it, but I got me a pretty good hustle. <laughs> Another girl with stars in her eyes, huh? Jeez, go ahead and tell the whole room. Hey, keep any of the secrets on you.
All right, Kaito-san, you called it. Kosuke-kun just blew all his earnings on Chohan. Huh. Told ya. So, what do you say we do? Cause I say we cut to the chase, and have us a little one-on-one. -on -one. Huh. My thoughts exactly. Good. I'll bring the car around. College boy is about to learn something they don't teach in class. Hey man, hold up a sec. I think you dropped something. Huh? I've got my phone on me. What'd I lose? Well, it could be any number of things, to tell you the truth. Maybe your conscience, or even your integrity. You feel like you might have left those somewhere? Huh? What's your freaking problem? Does scamming a young lady ring any bells for you? You've been working with a crooked bar to make her foot a 1.2 million yen bill. What in the hell are you even talking about, dude? Have you conned so many girls you can't even keep the scam straight anymore? You better back off me. I've got the full support of the Tojo clan on this thing, man. Still think it's wise to talk shit? The Tojo clan? You mean the Yakuza? <laughs> Pissing yourself yet? You're about to be real sorry, asshole! <laughs> the Tojo clan thugs got disbanded ages ago. If name-dropping a long-dead gang was supposed to scare me, I'm not very impressed. Son of a... Let's fucking go! I wouldn't do that if I were you. That excuse for a punch told me all I need to know. Fuck you, man! That last one was just a warning shot! No more chances! The gloves are coming off right now, bro, and you're gonna get fucked up! I hear you, kid. So, I can take the gloves off too, right? For real right now? Well, I pump iron at the gym once a week, my man. You're going down. <laughs> Don't say I didn't warn you. Ah! Yoshiro-san! Over here! Please, you gotta help me! Kosuke, what happened? This guy giving you trouble? Yeah, he just started wailing on me all of a sudden! He did? Well, what's your problem? This gentleman you're harassing is my client. Client? That a tatami room term for gambling addict? <laughs> gambling? Who told you about the tatami room? People only get in through me. And I sure as hell don't know you. Look, I don't have time to play around right now. Too late, asshole. You just signed up for a beating! Now you're really asking for it. What's your problem? Hold up.
Come on, Kosuke Kun. Are you done? <laughs> you can't help yourself, can you, Tuck? For being a lawyer, you sure like to settle things with your fists. A, a lawyer? How the fuck are you a lawyer? Yagami-san, you're not really a detective? I'm a detective, all right. As for the badge, I still have a license to practice, so I hold on to it. Is it safe to assume, then, you used to work at Genda Law? Yep. Hit the nail on the head, actually. These days, he hands off the gigs that are better suited for detectives, like him. Now it's making a little more sense. Did you catch all that, Kosuke-kun? Huh? Well, if you want a closer look, I'll be more than happy to accommodate you. What? Yeah, care to go for a ride? <laughs> We're gonna be buds, Kosuke. This isn't funny! They stabbed things off me! I swear, this is all a mistake! Kosuke-kun... Uh, Yuko-chan! Don't let these assholes con you! Believe me, I didn't do anything wrong! Who the hell are these thugs? Who is Yuko-chan? Uh, uh, well... My name is Keiko, you jerk! And you think I trusted you? Here's the deal, Kosuke-kun. First, you're gonna cancel her debt to that bar. But that's not even my call. And second, they'll be returning every yen she paid. Plus a little extra for us having to deal with your bullshit. You're out of your freaking mind! Do you even know who you're- I have a pretty good idea. And I don't think very highly of con artists who prey on innocent women. <laughs> you tell him, Tuck. Hey! That's my phone! Dial up that bar for me, would ya? What bar? Drop the act, kid. That scam is the oldest trick in the book. You don't have any proof. Proof? Do we need to spell it out for you? We've got you by the balls, you shit. Who even are you people? <laughs> Some of Kamarocho's finest. The Yagami Detective Agency. You mean, your detectives? It's an amazing. Smart guy, huh? Everyone in town knows us. They do? You're goddamn right they do! Don't talk like you never heard of us! Give the guy a break, Kaito-san. We're still getting our name out there. Uh, you know. Look, I, I get what you're after, but give it up! That money's as good as gone! The guy who runs that bar's ex-Tojo clan! I was lying when I said he's Yakuza! Yeah? Well, I used to roll with the Tojo myself. I might even know the dumb bastard. You know he's all bark and no bite, don't you? The Tojo clan got disbanded. Yeah, but he's still a criminal! Just because his clan broke up doesn't change a thing! He's just a dickless ex-Yakuza strutting around, flashing a pin that don't mean shit. Still, even an ex-Yakuza is dangerous, right? Are you sure you'll be safe? Yeah, got this under control. Danger is our specialty. So, which numbers the bar keeps? You really shouldn't. Still worried about pissing off an ex-Yakuza? I'd worry more about the one right in front of you. Or would you rather try your luck? <sighs> Hey, uh, Chief, <laughs> you wouldn't happen to be back at the shop, would you? Yeah, I am. Why, you, uh, find yourself a new chick, huh? Oh, you just keep reeling them in, don't you? <laughs> Not exactly. No? Well, hey, at least you still got Keiko on lock. Yeah, these broads will do anything if you know how to squeeze them right. You could make a fortune milking her. Bastard. Wait a minute, though. What happens when Keiko brings you the money? Oh, <laughs> that's simple. 
First, we take the cash off of hand. Then we slap on a last minute late fee and send her sobbing all the way to the soap lab. <laughs> right, sounds like you got it all figured out. Wait, why'd your voice change all of a sudden? <laughs> Took you long enough. Wait up, who the hell is this? I suggest you remember this voice. Because I'm about to come knocking, and this time, you'll be the one paying the price. Holy shit! You're kind of insane, man. Sorry to break this to you, Keiko-san. Kosuke-kun had you fooled. No matter what lengths you went to for him, all he ever thought of was using you. You were just an easy mark the whole time. Don't get me wrong, Keiko-san. This did start out as business, but now I've seen... Uh, the light! <laughs> oh! That's enough out of you. Come on, let's get you back to Gendas before the fireworks start. Trust me, you'll be safe there. <laughs> okay. You wouldn't want to see what we're going to do to that place anyway. <laughs> it's going to get ugly. You mean you're going to take them on alone? <laughs> That's always how it goes down around here for some reason. Let's go, Kiko-san. Gendo Sensei's office is just up ahead. This is Genda Law, where I got my start as a lawyer. The owner, Genda Sensei, is like a father to me. He's been a well-respected figure in Kamrajo for years. The Genda Sensei... Huh? Where is everyone? Oh, Saurakun and company are down at the courthouse. Those two are always putting in a hard day's work. the other day. It was that con artist case. How'd it go? Did Yagami get that solved for you? He goes all in on his cases, but that's about his only redeeming quality. Yeah, he's really gone above and beyond. <laughs> Sorry to impose, Genda Sensei, but can Keiko-san stay here a while? Fine by me. It was getting a little too quiet around here anyway. So you want me to stay here until things calm down? You sure that's safe? Yeah, we'll be back before you know it. Speaking of which, it's rare to see the office this empty. You guys working a big case? Yeah, <laughs> big enough to keep Saori Kun and Hoshino Kun out of trouble, I suppose. It's not a murder case, is it? No, no, it's an anti-nuisance ordinance violation. Huh? Oh, you mean... It's a groping case? She's a smart one. This happened two months back. Some good Samaritans at a train station pinned down a groper who was trying to make a getaway. Wouldn't you know it, the culprit was a cop, of all things. Makes you wonder what this world's coming to. Naturally, the press had a field day with it. It was all you saw on the news for a while. Oh yeah, I remember hearing about that. It was all over the internet. Anything that stops the trains during rush hour makes the news. It was all they talked about. Probably because he was a policeman. The judge is handing down the verdict today, and I don't expect he'll be pleased with it. Every answer he's given has been, I don't recall. Like, that'll do him any good. Stop that man! That man's a grover! Stop him! Stop him! I, I, I didn't do it! Station car. This man grabbed me on the train. He put his hand up my skirt. 
No, you're wrong. You got the wrong guy. Stop struggling, asshole. Let me go. The cops can check your hands to see if you did it or not. Be here in a second now, so just chill out. Hey, are you filming this? Put that camera away. Do you mind sitting up straight in court, please? Hmm. A bad attitude isn't going to do you any favors. Does it even matter? It's over. The verdict has already been decided. Your demeanor still has consequences. The worse things are looking for you, the better an impression you need to make. Leave an impression. <laughs> well, if I were the judge, I'd be happy about having an easy day on the job for once. This is no time to be cynical, either. Besides, the judge hasn't... It's decided. Guilty as charged. <laughs> this also means it's almost time for the curtain to fall until the grand finale. What? And so, let's get this show on the road. All rise. Well, like I said, we should have a verdict coming down today. We only really needed Sauri Kuhn at the bench, but Hoshino Kuhn insisted on joining her. Truth be told, I still can't tell when he's trying to help or when he's trying to impress her. <laughs> then he'll need to pull out all the stops. Sour Raccoon's no slouch. Plus, she's got ice in her veins. Speaking of, how'd you end up on the hook for defending an active duty officer? Well, another firm had it on their plate first, actually. Comro PD, they have their go-to guys. The plan was to get a confession, earning the defendant a nice retirement package and a simple case dismissed. You mean, he'd be found innocent? Bottom line, yeah. On the condition he left the forest anyway. Correct. But the plan fell apart when the cop kept insisting he didn't do it, in spite of the evidence stacked against him. So, once Kamuro PD's lawyers decided to throw in the towel, the case went straight to Sauri Kuhn, who just happened to take the call. Huh. Makes sense. I'm sure they'll be back soon if you wanted to stick around. I would, but I gotta tie up a few loose ends. But let us know if any new requests come in. Restless as always. You ever heard of a vacation, Yagami? <laughs> That's exactly why I turned my hobby into a job. Besides, I like staying busy. <laughs> Fine. You never did listen to your elders. Anyway, I shouldn't keep Kaito-san waiting. Thanks again for looking after Keiko-san. Shop talk? <laughs> Not gonna be any bottles of beer on the wall when we're done. Let's get to work. That's what I'm talking about. Well, this the dump you brought Keiko Chan to? It is! So could you please just let me go? Not a chance. You get a front row seat for when your boss shows up. What are you, crazy? He'd murder me on the spot! Then he'd murder you two for dessert! Huh. He's that scary, huh? 
Yes, actually. Not to mention all his boys. All the more reason to put him in his place. Pricks like that need to learn how to treat a lady. Agreed. Oh, hold on. Sugiura. Really? Oh, could he choose a worse fucking time? Talk about a buzzkill. Hey there. You miss me? Jeez, it's been what? Half a year? Everything good over there? Good as it gets. Well, got some good news of my own I wanted to give you, man. Tsukumo kun and I have our very own detective agency. Wait, are you saying you started a detective agency? Meaning, now you're a detective? Yep, got our own office and everything. It's in Yokohama. Didn't want to muscle in on your turf. Man, I don't know what to say. Oh, and by Tsukumo, you mean... The one and only. At least, the only one I know. Thought his hacking might give us an edge. Never figured he and I were on the same wavelength about stuff. You wanna wrap this up, Tuck? Anyway, we got a pretty big case. And to be honest, we're in a little over our heads. So that got me thinking, why don't we call up the bros? So they can show us how it's done. Uh, do you need an answer right away? We're in the middle of the usual. Oh yeah? More sneaky shit? Yep, I'll tell you all about it later. Oh, come on. Give me just a hint. Sorry, buddy. Set? Huh. Then let's roll. Kosuke, care to explain what the fuck's going on? It's... Uh, not what you think. We're here on account of a woman named Keiko Hamada. She says she's been threatened by an illegitimate business. Oh, I see. You're the guy who had this dipshit's phone. Yagami Detective Agency, at your service. Yagami Detective? Yo, wait a sec. You the kid Matsugane-san took in? There! You see? <laughs> I told you people have heard of us. Huh. As for me, the name's Kaito. Used to wear the Matsugane <laughs> myself. Oh, I've heard plenty about you. You're a real celebrity, buddy. <laughs> a man's gotta have a reputation, right? Masaharu Kaito. Ugly as an ape and just as dumb. Let's an amateur thief get the drop on him, then forks over the family safe? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're a real legend. Don't talk like you were there, jackass. You want an ape? I'm about to go ape shit here! Come on now, don't give him what he wants. Fuckhead. Now that we're past introductions, we're here to get Keiko-san's money. And we'll be tacking on our fee on top of that. Just business. I'm sure you understand. <laughs> Hear that, boys? The detectives come to collect. You know the best part of breaking ranks with the Tojo clan? The freedom. Yeah. No more paying cuts to guys upstairs. Makes us even tougher. And guess what I spent the cash on? The walls. Now this is damn good soundproofing. Meaning whatever goes on inside, stays inside. You'll find out just how convenient that is. You hear that, Kaito-san? He says we're free to cut loose. Oh, yeah. Best news I've heard all day. I'm gonna open up a can of... Hey, uh, hold that thought a minute. Greetings, Yagamishi. Did Sugiyoroshi call you a second ago? He did, but look, Tsukumo, now's really not a good time. Oh, so you really are just busy? He said you hung up on him, so I wanted to make sure. He didn't offend you, did he? I hate to think he upset you, you know? But if so, we didn't mean it. On behalf of both of us, I offer my profuse apologies. Yep, no offense taken, man. But you see my point, right? Sugiura, she and I are a team. Our actions reflect on each other. Any responsible member of a company... I mean, any responsible member of society. It's, 
It's a matter of respect. Okay, I get the picture. We'll continue this later. Okay, but when is later? Should I call you back? If you have an estimate, I can set a timer. That way I'll know when it's convenient. Right, uh, where do we leave off? You gotta be shitting me! Yeah, pretty lame talk. That's it. You jokers are dead meat! Listen, I just wanted to thank the both of you for all you've done. Well, I'm just glad to hear they got your money back. These two are something, huh? Oh, yes. I don't know how I could possibly repay them. Oh, don't worry about it. Besides, those thugs paid our service fee and then some. <laughs> nice of them to eat the cost, huh? Beg your pardon? Oh, uh, nothing. I take it all back. Anyway, what happened to the crooks? If they're smart, they're skipping town. Doubt they'd reopen after how bad we wrecked the place. As for Kosuke, I made sure to tip his college off about his little side business. Should help him rethink his life choices. So I'd say this case is closed. Well, I've sure learned my lesson. It's a scary world out there. Oh yeah? Mm-hmm. From now on, I choose the place when meeting boys online. And I should probably change dating apps while I'm at it. That's your big takeaway? Really, Kiko Chan. You're laying this all on the app, not the sketchy internet dudes. Oh, I don't think so at all. Plenty of people these days meet their match online. It's true, Kaito san. Apparently, that's a thing now. You see, if you don't seize the opportunity when it knocks, it won't be just the times that leave you behind. Fine, fine. Hear you loud and clear. Saori-san and Hoshino-kun sure are taking their sweet time. Now that you mention it, they should have left the courtroom a while ago. Maybe they stopped for a quickie somewhere. There's nothing between those two. Nothing real, anyway. These old eyes can tell that much. Wisdom comes with age, huh? Damn right it does. And I've got more than you kids on both counts. You talking about Matsugane-san? Yep. The lawyer and the Yakuza. Best of both worlds. Though we came from different backgrounds, we were brothers in arms. Both trying to make it in Kamuracho. You two ought to visit his grave every now and again. We will. That goes without saying. Well, I guess we should get going. I guess so. Thanks for having us on such short notice. Oh, and give the two lovebirds our regards. All right. The court is prepared to issue its verdict. The sentence for the defendant, Akihiro Ihara, is six months of penal servitude. He's getting prison time for his first offense? Isn't it usually just probation in cases like this? Yes. 
I'm sure his attitude didn't help the situation. From the start, the evidence was stacked against him, and all he did was deny it. If that will be all, we can proceed with the court's rationale. The defendant may be seated. You'd rather hear this standing up? Your Honor, in a warehouse, about three days ago, a body turned up in Yokohama. Oh, maybe you hadn't heard that. What? What the hell? What is he talking about? I don't know. <laughs> I'll take that as a no. In that case, Make sure you pass this along to the Kanagawa police. They'll want to know that the body belongs to a guy named Hiro Mikoshiba. Four years ago, this man took my son from me by driving him to commit suicide. He deserved to die a thousand times, but he was never even accused of a crime. No, he just went on with his life. The law let him walk. An utterly broken system. Order in the court. The defendant shall refrain from making such outbursts. Defense, do you have an explanation for the meaning of this? Uh, Your Honor, we, uh, well... How's that for an honest day's work? <laughs> I just want to go put my feet up in the office. Sounds like a plan. I need to get back to Sugiura, too. He was telling us about a big job. You mean a big job for us? Yeah, down in Yokohama. By the way, Sugiura and Tsukumo? They're detectives now. Those two detectives? <laughs> Good one, Todd. It... Wait, you serious? <sighs> This game is absolute bullshit. It's like it's designed to eat your money. Yeah, what a fucking scam. Fuck this. I'm beyond pissed. I need to unload on someone's face. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Why don't we go give some asshole a game over? You know I'm always down. This is the Yagami Detective Agency. I run the place with the help of my partner, an ex-Yakuza named Kaito. I wish I could say keeping this place afloat was smooth sailing. But the reality is, we'd be drowning if it weren't for the gigs we get from Genda-sensei. It's not like we don't have the technology. But when street smarts fail, most of the time we have to get physical. That happens a lot. Guess we can finally take a breather. Weren't you supposed to call Sugiura? I was, wasn't I? Crazy how he ended up in our line of work. After seeing us in action, who could blame him? Yagami-san, everything okay over there? 
Yeah, sorry, it's a long story. You were saying something about a big case? Oh, yeah. Listen, man, you gotta come check out Yokohama. We've been getting jobs left and right down here. And if we can ace this case I've got lined up, we'll be the hottest detectives in town. Oh, yeah? You sure it's a legit lead? Hey, have some faith. Would I waste your time on a bad lead? Just looking out for you, man. <laughs> well, I do appreciate that. Then, should I save the details for when I see you? Sure. When do you want us over? Honestly, ASAP. Tomorrow, if you can swing it. We're based in Ijincho. Look for an office that says Yokohama 99 out front. That's us. The real question is, you free on such short notice? Uh, let me check my schedule. What schedule? Outside of today's shit, we haven't had work in weeks. If I tell them that, they'll lowball our cut, smart guy. Oh, right. <laughs> Guess we don't want to look desperate. Uh, sorry, Sugira. Yeah, tomorrow works just fine. Perfect. Man, this is gonna be so great. Oh, and Kaito-san's coming too, right? He'll be there. Sweet. See you guys soon, then. Sugiura said he'd give us the details when we get there. Huh. Way to build the suspense. Yokohama, though. Can't say I'm really familiar with that neck of the woods. Same here. But you know what? Kamurocho has been pretty tame lately. Maybe this is our chance to broaden our horizons. Yokohama 99's cross streets. Aww, it's not even close to Chinatown. So much for us getting a decent meal on this trip, huh? Well, then how about on the way home we take ourselves a little detour? Maybe. Tsukumo's place is way out there. Wanna take a taxi? I suppose we could. But why don't we hoof it? Yeah, we could see the sights. I guess I'm on board with that.
up a sec talk. Hmm? Nonsense over there. <laughs> That's not what I saw. So, what'd you call me? What the? Hey, what are you filming me for? Knock it off! Chill out, man. Why do you care? I don't see anything that says I can't record here. Enough! Stop! Just give me a reason. You have one? It's a free country, isn't it? <laughs> Whoa! Hey! What gives? You just kicked my sight over! Ah, that was the wind, man. A big old gust just came through, right? Yeah, crazy. Just now it whooshed right over. Uh, I told you! Put that down! <laughs> Come on! Kids don't seem to give any fucks about people these days. Agreed. So much for seeing the sights, huh? Well, you're thinking what I'm thinking, aren't you? <laughs> Do you have to ask? <laughs> so, anything else you want to accuse us of? I'd say you must be losing it, Pop. You goddamn brats! I got that one! He called us goddamn brats! You picking on high schoolers, man? Uh, no, I just don't want you loitering in front of my store! That's all I said, okay? So stop disturbing my customers! <laughs> that part's not gonna make the video. Wow, is that one of those new smartphone models? May I? What the hell? Damn, the camera on this thing is amazing, man. Your parents buy it for you? Holy crap, he kicked Sakaki down! You must be seeing things, kid. Anyway, your smartphone's kinda dirty, don't you think? <clears throat> Let me see. Hey! Give me my phone back! You want it back? I'll give it back, but only if you put this poor restaurant owner's sign back up first. Asshole. You think you can fuck with us? You're gonna kick your ass! Come on! Guys are monsters. Yo, <laughs> was that Aikido just now? Oh, don't tell me you've been training at a secret dojo or something. Uh, just more of my own thing, really. Figured I'd find a way to hold back for punks like them. Here, this came from one of those kids. You recall what to do with it. <sighs> You really didn't have to, but thank you. Those were students from Serio High. <sighs> You'd think private school kids would be better behaved, but they're just as immature. They look like a bunch of entitled brats. <laughs> They'd learned some manners the hard way in Kamrocho. Well, we've got our fair share of unsavory types. The Yakuza. Not to mention those Yokohama Leomon gangsters. Those kids wouldn't dare to mess with them. So they're selective about their targets. Yes. They'll only harass you if they think they'll get away with it. Think they'll be back for more? I certainly hope not. But anyway, I sure am glad you stopped by. Come to think of it, you're the only ones who've ever intervened. I take it you're not from around here? Yeah. But we might end up staying. For a while at least. 
Ever hear of a detective agency called Yokohama 99? We were on our way there right now. Hmm. I'm afraid that doesn't ring a bell. That's all right. If anything, we should get going. Sure. Oh, but before that, please take this with you. Consider it a token of my gratitude. Yokohama 99. Yep, that's the place. Whoa, not too shabby, guys. Yo. Isn't the man of the hour, Yagamishi? <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome. How are you? <laughs> this guy. First, he falls off the radar. Now he's got this sweet office. You're still quick as a thief. Maybe a little quicker, actually. Well, I'd say thief isn't very fair. It was stealing. Oh, come on. You know I wasn't doing it to line my own pockets, right? We took from the powerful and gave to the powerless. It was altruism. And it's all in the past now, so let's just leave it at that. The place is nice, though. Kind of familiar, even. It should be. You're our inspiration, Yagami Detective Agency. You guys are the goal. Huh. For sure. So, how about you guys take a load off? If you're ready, I'll give you guys the briefing. Say what? A briefing, man? Let him go over what we know. I've actually got an agenda for today's meeting, too. An agenda? Just roll with it. Give him a chance. All the detective talk has made him go a little overboard. I'm sure it'll work itself out. <laughs> it's all good. Imitation really is the sincerest form of flattery. To sum up why we called you, we've been seeing a major upward trend with these kinds of cases. What do you think? Care to take a wild guess? I'll give you a hint. It's not a problem you'd find in Kamurocho. So, it's specific to Yokohama? I know. It's gang warfare. The outfits run in Chinatown or at each other's throats, and you guys sort out the aftermath. Well, we did just hear about the Yokohama Liumang. They're a gang, right? Yeah, the Yokohama Liu, whatever. But they're stirring up shit as we speak. Actually, we haven't run into any gang-related activity at all. No, what we're dealing with isn't so conspicuous. I'll just tell you, it's bullying. Bullying? Sometimes parents ask us for evidence to prove their child was bullied. Fairly often, they want these bullies taken to court immediately. They'll also want to hold the schools accountable, but none of that happens without solid proof. How old are these kids? Most of them are in middle school. Research shows that boys at that age experience a sudden spike in testosterone. This leads to outbursts to assert dominance, compounded by the irrationality of an immature brain. Scientifically, this potent mix of impulses often manifests as bullying. Yeah, I call that puberty. But that would apply specifically to boys, right? You're getting cases with girls involved too, aren't you? Ah, with girls it's more likely rooted in oxytocin, a brain hormone that also has links to bullying. See, oxytocin fosters feelings of attachment, regardless of your gender. For instance, scientists have observed that a mother's oxytocin levels surge when looking at her child. 
then it's not always a bad thing, is what you're saying. Indeed. Did you know it was oxytocin that enabled cooperation among our primitive ancestors? Ancient matriarchs were particularly vulnerable during childbirth, thus requiring communal support. So you could kind of say the survival and reproduction of our species was largely oxytocin at work. After all, raising a child in the wilderness would have been impossible alone. However, this intense social need bore a dark side. Individuals who failed to contribute were shunned and eventually condemned. Let's say there was a villager who never put in his fair share. All he did was eat the crops. If that became the norm, nobody would work until the village was on the brink of starvation. By then it'd be too late. Precisely. That's why these offenders were punished. Primitive as it was, punishment equated to justice. A necessary measure for society's greater good. And societies with a stricter sense of justice were the ones who endured in the long run. To put this into focus, these people are our direct ancestors. So from a science perspective, modern-day bullying is just primitive? More like it's hardwired into our nature. Hormones are fucked up, huh? I wouldn't chalk it up to just that. However, we humans do tend to reject what's foreign to us. Whether we're socially awkward or simply misunderstood, those who don't conform are ostracized. That's how it's been since time immemorial. The misfits of civilization are deserving of punishment. All over the world, no matter where or when. Looks like you guys have been doing your homework. Tsukumo-kun's the one hitting the books. I'm more in charge of the fieldwork. Makes sense. Here's another fun fact while we're at it. An act of betrayal also increases the human urge to punish the offender. In those cases, the act of punishment floods the brain with dopamine, triggering an instant rush of pleasure. In other words, serving justice can feel just as good as eating or having sex. Sure, but that's where we have to draw the line. Justice can't be twisted into joy, or it stops serving its purpose. Very perceptive, Yagamishi. So, back to reality. What's this big case that needs all the manpower? Ah, yes. Our client is the chairman of a private school. He wants us to scour the campus for any and all instances of bullying, leaving no stone unturned. That said, he also requires us to be discreet. How big is this school? Uh, let's see, there are six classes per grade, making 18 in total. So approximately 600 students. Given that, Sugiyurashi and I couldn't possibly vet them alone. We'll be meeting the chairman at a restaurant tonight to lay out the specifics. How about the two of you come join us? We could use the help. Man, <laughs> for a couple of rookies, you sure have it together. You guys are free until dinner. Oh, we already made the reservations in Chinatown, by the way. Think of it as a little welcoming party. The restaurant's name is Kyoinro. If you could meet us there, that'd be great. Sure. <laughs> you didn't have to do that. Inro. Looks like this is it. Are you almost here, Yagamishi? We went ahead and sat down. Actually, we're right out front. Excellent. Just give the host my name. Will do. <laughs> Was this the same guy living in a net cafe not too long ago? He sure has come a long way. Yeah, at this rate he'll leave us in the dust. Without further ado, allow me to introduce Yagamishi and Kaito-san, the gentlemen I mentioned before. They are, without a doubt, the finest private eyes in Kamurocho. Ah, yes. Tsukumo-san here has certainly been singing your praises. My name is Ukuda. 
I'm the chairman of a private high school. Serio, if you've heard of it. Serio High. Isn't that where those kids were from? Yeah, the ones from earlier. Is something the matter? We actually ran into some of your students today. There must have been seven, eight of them. They were harassing a restaurant worker and recording it on their phone. Oh boy. And I'm guessing you didn't just stand and watch? You bet your ass we did. Had to knock a little sense into those brats. You mean there was an altercation? I... Perhaps I should pretend not to have heard that. Come on, pal. Why don't we cut the formal crap and tell it like it is? Because that would be unprofessional, Kaito-san. Chairman, we'd like to start investigating tomorrow. So would you mind sharing any background information you may have? Certainly, yes. Our administration has a very firm stance against bullying. Yet no policy is foolproof, and each situation is unique. We continually ask ourselves, are we taking proper measures to foster a supportive environment? Or, if enmity is already prevalent among the student body, are we addressing their concerns promptly enough? I believe the key is prevention. Stop bullying before it starts. And you're hiring detectives to help? Oh, yes. See, as this thought was dawning on me, I happened to cross a sign. Yokohama 99, it read. I visited your webpage, actually, and I discovered just how well-versed you were at this very matter. At that moment, I knew fate was guiding my hand. Sounds like you walked right out of a commercial. In most situations we've dealt with, we knew who the problem was beforehand. All we needed to do was get the evidence. But in this case, we don't even know if there's a bully in the first place. Hence, why we called in the reinforcements. So, I take it you have some sort of plan? Of course. We're going to start by spreading hidden cameras throughout the school, anywhere that bullying is most likely to occur. This footage should provide a detailed snapshot of student interaction that would otherwise go unnoticed. Then, after a two-week test run, we'll compile our data and present our initial analysis. Nothing beats a good old-fashioned spy cam. Yes, but if one of these spy cams were found, the whole operation could be compromised. As such, our pair of experts are intimately familiar with the complexities of human behavior, ensuring these cameras remain hidden. <laughs> Damn, you make me want to hire us. This secret stays between you and us, Chairman. Not even the guards or teachers can know. Do I have that correct? You do. I believe the more people who know, the more likely it is this would get out. At any rate, I've heard Yagami-san here has tackled many a difficult case in Kamojo. I'm glad to have such a reliable detective on the job. You have my full confidence and backing. <laughs> they just keep raising the bar on us, don't they? So, Yagami-shi, if there's anything you'd like to ask the chairman, now's your chance. Hey, good idea. We might learn a thing or two from watching the Master at work. Way to put me on the spot, guys. But might as well. So, we never actually resolved this, but... We did get into a scuffle with your students. No one got hurt, but how do you feel about that? Uh... Well, uh, I'm afraid I have to remain ignorant of that. Fine. But let me tell you one thing. Next time I see your students harassing someone, it's gonna be lights out. The kitty gloves are off. <laughs> that also part of the Yagami Detective Agency package? In the event we do uncover bullying, what action would you take? Of course, we would provide appropriate counseling, in addition to notifying the local authorities. Wouldn't that mean increasing the teacher's workload? Interviewing students, filling out paperwork... That could lead to making people not want to bother reporting it. Hmm. 
sad to say, I can't rule out that possibility. The teachers have so much on their plate as it is. I doubt they'd volunteer to look for any extra trouble. That is why we must strike at the root of it. What if you offered your staff a bonus for catching any bullies in the act? <laughs> I know that'd motivate me. Uh, you don't think that'd backfire? <laughs> Actually, it might be worth considering. But the fact of the matter remains. Bullying has no perfect solution. Could you elaborate on why you're going the detective route for this? Like I said, my goal is to nip any bullying in the bud before it can grow any worse. And it's not enough for the teachers to be on full alert? Unfortunately, no. I'm afraid I can't fully trust whatever they jot down on some report. Okuda-san, you mentioned you couldn't trust your teacher's reports. Why is that? Um, human error, I suppose. Behavior can be ambiguous, and it is difficult to notice every little detail. Your first response seemed to hint at something else. Yes. Yes, I suppose it did. Can you tell me what's going on? Uh, oh, no. Where should I begin? You see, folks, it has been almost four years since the suicide of one of our students. The poor boy hung himself at home. You mean, because he was being bullied? Not on paper, at least. We established a committee to investigate, but they never turned up anything. Neither did the court. Wait, you were taken to court? Yes. One of the student's parents filed a lawsuit. Now, there were online postings that may or may not have hinted at bullying. But the prosecution never found substantial evidence, and the court ruled we were in the clear. If I can ask your honest opinion, was there really no bullying, Chairman? I would like to believe there wasn't. But I may have been too far removed from the classroom to say that in good faith. Every day, I watch our students come to school, and what I see are young, happy kids. They're all so full of life, with bright futures ahead of them. However, around two months ago, we lost contact with one of our student teachers. Everyone assumes it's a mental health issue. The hell? <laughs> Don't tell me he got picked on, too. That could have been the case. But I didn't get enough details to say for sure. From what I'd observed, he appeared to be getting along quite well with the students. But I later heard his family had reported him missing. At the end of the day, I'm asking you to shed light on the darkness that's plagued my school. That is why I went the detective route. I think this conversation has been enlightening. Any thoughts, Tsukumo? Hmm, what else is there? I suppose we'll have to see when we get there. We may have more questions then. That would be fine. All right then. Time to dig in or what? Are you really pretending you waited? You've been nibbling this whole time. <laughs> you call this nibbling? Hey, waiter! I want a place in order! And tell your chef, I hope his kitchen can handle this heat! Uh, I take it this place isn't exactly cheap? Don't you worry about that, Yagamishi. The bill's on us. It's your welcoming party, remember? In that case... Uh, excuse me! I'm ready to order too. So, how was that for your first day's work? 
I realize that meeting was a lot to take in, but the task at hand seems pretty straightforward. Oh yeah. What was that you said about using hidden cameras? Tomorrow we'll be deciding where to put them. We don't have all that many, so you know. Oh, and we'll be dressed as AC repairmen. What? You gonna make us wear uniforms? <laughs> of course. Freshly laundered and ready for duty. As you may recall, only the chairman is aware of our investigation. We must therefore deceive both student and faculty. Sounds like a plan to me. For now, let's call it a night. <laughs> You've got a point there. In any case, try to make yourselves at home. Apologies in advance if you find our amenities wanting. Eugene Cho's not such a bad town. And the Chinese food, oh, top notch. Besides, these kids got nothing on our usual Yakuza flunkies. I'm a night owl, so my work's just starting. I recommend you get some sleep for tomorrow. If you want to close your eyes for a bit, the couch is surprisingly comfortable. Yagami san. Huh? 
Gotcha. Excuse me.
Oh. Are you serious? <laughs> I owe you one. Yagamishi, remember those uniforms I mentioned yesterday? You'll need to put one on before we go. They should be a perfect fit. <laughs> After all, there's no information I can't find, body measurements included. Yeah, I don't doubt that. You've never been one to miss a detail. What's up with those guys? They sure look like men on a mission. But for what? We will now commence our journey by taxi to Sewio High. Gentlemen, are we all ready? Remember, this case can open up a lot for us depending on how we solve it. So let's leave no stone unturned. <laughs> Don't worry. No case is too big or too small. We always swing for the fences. Ain't that right, Tom? <laughs> you know it. Good. Then let's get going. Ah, you must be the repairman. The chairman said you'd be here. I take it you know where you're going? Yes, but thank you anyway. Ooh, this place reeks of money. Uh, they are a prestigious prep school. Wonder if the kids are on recess. So, our first order of business is to analyze the layout of the school. The schoolyard should provide the proper vantage point. Let's head there. It seems this school's design is fairly conventional. See, there's the classroom building, and that must be the gym. By the way, how many spy cams do we have? Twenty in total, all of which feed directly to my computer. Think we ought to split them up between us? We could, but that might draw extra attention. We stick out enough as is, so people will wonder what we're doing alone. But if we moved in pairs, they'd write us off a lot easier. <laughs> 
Clever as always, Yagamishi. Heh. <laughs> that reminds me of something. When a con man pretends to be a cop, they'll usually bring along a partner. It seems the added person adds legitimacy. Unless you're a natural skeptic. All that is to say, Yagamishi knows his material. Hear that, Top? <laughs> you should have been a con man. Very funny. So, how about Kaito-san and I take half the cameras and you guys take the rest? Where are they, anyway? Right here. Now, these cameras don't see very far, but they do see wide. 150 degrees, to be precise. So let's try to set them up where we think a bully would be most likely to strike. So, we just gotta find the teacher's blind spots, eh? <laughs> You're looking at a natural, buddy. You would brag about something like that, Kaito-san. <laughs> Better stop before I blush. All right, guys, I think it's time for action. Okay, Tak and I'll start here. And you guys can work your way around opposite us. Affirmative. We've only got ten cameras, so we gotta use them smart. The shoe lockers. <laughs> Bet all kinds of team drama goes down here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's where you drop love letters to your crush. Or challenge your rivals to duels. Dude, what century did you go to school in? Look, whatever. All I'm saying is, this place is worth at least three cameras. That many? Just for the lockers? Yep. See, a school never has that many blind spots. So when you do fight one, you make it special. And this one's pinging my radar pretty hard here. Huh. After that, sure, let's do it. Sukumo reporting in. I see you've set up a few cameras already. Feed is coming in nice and clear. You guys are doing awesome. Thanks. How's things on your end? We just finished with the back of the gym. Next up is the classroom building. Copy that. All right, Tuck. Just follow my lead. The boys will handle this floor, so let's go up one more. Gotcha. Every bully loves a good pair of stairs. <laughs> Pushing someone down them ruins their day pretty quick. You think it's really that often? Still, it is a blind spot. Yep, close corners make for poor visibility. Making this a number one choice among assholes. You don't say. All right, then let's get a camera here. All right, let's move up to the next floor. Yagami sheep. Are you perhaps on the second floor? Yeah, we're about to start setting up. Okay, we're almost done with the first floor, and we'll be heading to the east building after. I think we can handle that all on our own. So can you finish up the second and third floors here? Sure, not a problem. Splitting up for a bit shouldn't hurt. How about I take the second floor and you do the third? Works for me.
Uh, looking for something, pal? Yeah, I'm kind of busy, in case you couldn't tell. Suspicious. Thousand yen, no questions asked. That'll cover a pack of smokes, maybe two. You're saying I should take this? Well, yeah. Kinda sucks asking you to move on your break. <laughs> you know, you're not such a bad guy. In all honesty, uh, the budget's been tight this month. Kaito-san, I'm done setting up the third floor. Same. I've hit up every blind spot I can think of. Thing is, I've still got two cameras left. Maybe this tight corridor might be good. The teachers probably pass by without a second glance. Hey Kaito-san, don't you think we should be installing these in classrooms? Isn't that where bullying primarily takes place? You might be right about that. But we couldn't cover every classroom if we wanted to, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, fair enough. Nice to see you putting so much thought into this. So, as professionals, we'll just have to make do with what we've got. We should set this camera up wherever we can get the broadest view. How about the ceiling in the middle of the hall? Then we'll see everyone going in and out of class. Okay, Tuck, I'm gonna give you a boost. So make sure you find a good spot for that thing, okay? Uh-huh. You know, we totally could have done this during recess. Everyone's just staring at us. Too late to whine now. Just do what you gotta do and be done with it. kids who started trouble at the restaurant. You noticed too, huh? Classroom 2-2. Sounds like we've got some bullies in there for sure. That'll be a prime spot for the last camera. All right. Just make sure they don't see your face. Let's hit it. Excuse me, but I don't recall there being an inspection today. Uh... Uh... Whoa... Sorry to be in your way, ma'am. We won't take long. I understand. 
But nobody notified me we'd have any interruptions. Yeah, and nobody notified us this school hired such gorgeous teachers. You know what? I don't seem to recognize either of you. Probably because our usual repairmen were here just last month. Uh, I can't say I know anything about that. We're just here doing our job, ma'am. You can call me Sawa-sensei, not ma'am. And you're in my classroom. Forgive me, but who, may I ask, called you here? It was the chairman who called us in. I had assumed all teachers were notified. Oh, the chairman. Well, I suppose I should leave it at that then, hmm? Well, when you say it like that... It... Did he make this appointment with you directly? Uh, yep, sure did. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for your business. Hmm, and I'm sure our chairman gave you his name? His name? Oh, well, uh, that would be... Okuda-san. How could I forget? Yes, of course. I'm sorry for being so rude. Ah, no problem at all, Peach. By the way, anyone ever tell you how stunning you are? I'd say you're just my type. My dream gal, even. What? <laughs> uh, ignore him, please. Like I said, we'll get this done quick and be out of your hair. And we're done. Sorry again for the disturbance. We'll be going now. The hell was that, Kaito-san? You forget we're working here? Yeah, but man, that chick's the spitting image of a teacher I had a crush on. One of my few good school memories. What, so that makes me the bad guy? All right, all right. Back to work. I get it. This is Tsukumo reporting in. Yagamishi, please respond. Hey, man. We just finished setting up the cameras. Good. So did we. Could you and Kaito-san meet us at the gymnasium, then? It's empty at the moment. I thought we might as well check the camera feed and discuss what to do moving forward. Got it. Then we'll see you at the gym. Excellent work, gentlemen. All cameras are fully operational. So, now all we do is sit back and watch? Something like that, yes. By the way, Yagamishi, I noticed you installed a camera in a classroom. Did you find a lead there or something? Yeah, that classroom had those problem kids from yesterday. Thought they'd be worth keeping an eye on. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, nothing unusual's turned up yet. Guess we'll have to watch and wait. If there's any bullying happening at this school, this is a surefire way to find out. <sighs> Wrong as it is, there's something about smoking in school that makes it feel twice as good. You're awfully nostalgic today, Kaito-san. Yeah, well, my school wasn't as fancy as this one. Plus, I dropped out after a year. Uh-oh. Guys, check this out. I think we may have found something. What is it? This is the classroom where Yagamishi set up the camera. Class 2-2. Them again. Now they're picking on a girl.
Whoa, did you see that? No, no, they're writing something on her? With a permanent marker? Yo, talk. Let's go kick the shit out of those pumps. No way I'm letting that slide. Yeah, this is a problem. Hold on, Yagami-san. What now? Looks like they got what they came for. They're already leaving the classroom. Man, why's nobody helping her? It, it's like they don't even want to see it. Kids think this doesn't involve you? Let's go, Kaito-san. I want to see what happened with my own two eyes. Yeah. I suppose we should report this to our client. I didn't expect to find anything this quickly, though. But now, we have irrefutable evidence that bullying is real here at Serio. We'll have to take this up with the chairman and see how we should proceed. saw on camera. Let's get a little closer and see how she's doing. <laughs> Suspicious. Hey, what the... Suspicious. Yeah, what's up? I've just reported our findings to the chairman. Could you meet us here? His office is on the third floor of the East Building. On our way. Please, come in. Huh? You're that teacher. Sawa-sensei, wasn't it? To what do we owe the pleasure? All of these men are detectives? Yes, and I'd like you to keep their identities a secret. These gentlemen here are Yakami-san and Kaito-san. I see. Very well, then. I've explained the situation to Sawa-sensei, our homeroom teacher for class 2-2. Why don't you both have a seat? I knew something was wrong. But I could never put my finger on what? The girl being bullied. Her name's Mami Koda. Do I have that right? 
Yes, she's in the basketball club. And so are all those kids surrounding her. Wonder if that's where the bullying started. Sawa-sensei, you mentioned noticing something was wrong? Well, only that Koda-san hasn't been herself lately. Suspend him. Expel him. Kick those bullies the hell out of here. The video we took has all you need. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. For one thing, it would be quite problematic to use this video as evidence. Not true. The school can't just come out and say, we've been recording your kids without consent. Yes, and let us bear in mind, they still have their whole lives ahead of them. We cannot treat this lightly. <sighs> You're not saying we should look the other way, are you? Hey, last night you said the total opposite, man. If you intend to cover this up, let me just begin by saying... No one is suggesting we cover it up. Then we need to act now. We have no idea how close to the edge Koda-san could be. But if there's a chance... What if she does something drastic before tomorrow? Um, pardon me for saying so, but... Bullying is rarely resolved by the victim and the perpetrator coming to a mutual agreement. Thus, a third party must intervene. I presume you read that in a book somewhere. I can tell you from experience that no victim finds it easy to open up about their situation. Not to family, friends, anyone. It takes a tremendous amount of courage for a bullied child to come forth and seek help. So if we, as outsiders, are to intervene, we must consider the ramifications. Even so! No, I think the chairman's right. Making a big scene might only make things worse for Kodasan. Talk. That's not like you. Someone's drowning right in front of your eyes, and you're just gonna watch them sink? What I'm saying is, we have to put a stop to the bullying without getting the whole school involved. What started in that classroom will end in that classroom. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, but did you say you were a detective? The name's Yagami. And you want to put a stop to the bullying like it's that easy? Tell me. Where does all this confidence come from? You think there's a real chance we could pull this off, Yagami-san? I do. Can you bring up that video again? Sure. One moment. I think the secret to stopping the bullying is right here in this video. Really? Then by all means, detective, enlighten us. You don't have to be so condescending. Nope, she's got a point. You gotta back up that claim. So what's this big secret you're talking about? It's those students sitting idly by. They're aware of the problem, but aren't doing anything to help. Well, yeah, there's a whole flock of bullies. Get in their way, you're their next target. Adults do the same thing, honestly. Guess we're not so different from high schoolers. Then we should hold some sort of trial and get the class involved? Is that what you're trying to suggest? Again, something like that would only spread the issue. And that would only bring more pain to Kodosan. Tell me, what is your suggestion, Yagami-san? What I'm getting at is that it's the silence of all her classmates that's empowering these bullies. On the surface, we only see students turning their eyes as one of their own gets tormented. They feign disinterest, or pretend not to notice, because remember, that's the safest thing to do. But deep down, it kills them to see it. Yeah, no shit. So if the class could just express that, the pressure would then shift to the bullies. We have to tip the social balance in that classroom, become the voices of justice, of social law. Then, it's the bullies who become the outcasts. Would they keep running the risk of bullying if it meant social exile? Hmm. Huh. I can see how you arrived there. Alright, so where do we come in? We come in by giving the bystanders a voice. We're going to be the spark that lights a fire. 
After all, the first voice matters the most. Okay, so what's the plan here? Tsukumo, how fast can you get your hands on a couple of mini speakers? I want to put them in the classroom where they can't be seen. I can have them here momentarily, but I admit I don't really grasp the plan here. I don't blame you. I honestly can't say it'll work, but I think it's worth a shot. <laughs> I see. In that case, I'll be back before school's out. Chairman, I don't know what these detectives are planning, but I'll tell you this right now. I refuse to stand idly by while a student gets pushed to the breaking point. Do you remember what I told you about the student who committed suicide? That affected Sawa-sensei profoundly. Perhaps she blames herself for being unable to prevent it, whatever the cause may have been. I can see that. As the chairman of this school, I don't want to let her down. So please, help her, Yakimi-san. Help us all. How's it coming along, Yagamishi? No complications, I presume? So far, so good. Looks like most of the students have gone home. Do you have the speakers I gave you? Yep, and they're just what I needed. You're the man, Tsukumo. <laughs> How about we save the praise for after our plan works out? Anybody in the classroom right now? In class 2-2? Let me check. Hmm? Now that's odd. What's wrong? Well, that one's fine, but there's something wrong with the camera in the classroom building. The one on the second floor by the stairs. Is it broken? No, still getting a signal. Something might be blocking the lens? All right. I'll check it out on the way. How does it look, Yagamishi? Anything unusual? Let's find out. Huh? The heck is this? Did you find something? Yeah, a sticker on the lens. Uh, uh, Yagamishi, behind you! There he is! That's the pervert who set up the hidden camera! See, when you find a hidden camera, your first thought is to take it down. That's wrong. What you do instead is block the lens. That way, when the perv finally notices, he goes back to fix it and BAM! Caught in the act. I get it, Amasawa. Just stay back. Hey, what is it you're doing over there? I told you, he's trying to peep on us. Oh, wow, that girl's pretty sharp. Looks like we've been caught red-handed. Come on, let's catch him already. Wait! Are you safe, Yagamishi? Seems like you're in a bit of a pinch. Yeah, you think?
lab. Yagamichi, you should see a ladder that goes up to the gym's roof. That's my advice. Got it. Don't panic, but the school just contacted security. Several guards are en route to your location. Great. Just what I needed. Like you've made it to the rooftop. Where have you been watching from this whole time? From the drone, Yagamishi. I found a spot that's pretty inconspicuous. From here, use the drone as a guide and jump from that roof toward the classroom. You're gonna have to clear a big gap. Right. I'll try not to die. It looks like some of the guards have arrived. You think you can make it out of there? <sighs> I'll have to somehow. But before that, I'm gonna need to set up these speakers. What? Even after all that? Yeah, I should be able to make a clean getaway. As long as I'm done before security gets too tight. Are you serious? It'll be fine. All I have to do is not get caught, right? Besides, I have the world's greatest hacker on my side. I know very well I'm weak to flattery. <laughs> but for the glory of Yokohama 99, I will not let you down, Yagamishi. Let's get this mission started. All right, let's go. Like I said, I should be able to help you get to your destination without incident. Make sure you don't lose that earpiece, okay? Got it. Counting on you, Tsukumo. Okay, makes sense. Not happening. And this was the shortest route to Class 2-2. Uh, nothing we can do but find another route. Give me a moment. Yagamishi, it seems the rooftop might be a more viable option. Let's abandon this route and try it, shall we? Yeah. No sense waiting for the guards to just give up their posts. Let's check out the rooftop. Aha. Uh -huh. Hell, another roadblock? My apologies. I'm afraid that was a blind spot. Well, shit. Yagamishi, how many guards are there? Hmm? There's just one. Just one? Well, in that case, let's just get that guard out of your way. You got a plan? <laughs> of course. Yagamishi, it's time to put that thing I gave you to use. You mean this ball or whatever? What does it even do? It's kind of like one of those anti-theft balls, actually. You fill that ball with powder or liquid and throw it at your target to blind them. Right. So what's inside this thing? Oh, just some peppers. Peppers? <laughs> Is this really gonna work? Now, now. Don't doubt the magician. Just take my word for it and let it fly. Uh, 
I see now. Oh, damn. It worked like a charm. <laughs> what did I tell you? But, Yagamishi, that only works once. You'll have to procure a refill on your own. Yeah, I got it. Tsukumo, can you hear me? If I keep going down this way, I'll just end up back at the scene from earlier, right? The landing where you were accused of being a pervert? Yes, that's correct. You have any idea how it's looking right now? I'll take a look. There's no sign of that sharp girl who framed you. The onlookers seem to have dispersed too. Oh, then I'm good to go? There is one guard posted there. But I'm sure you can get past him. Yeah, piece of cake if he's alone. Okay, I'm in class 2-2. Two -two. Nobody in sight. Roger that. <laughs> Seems like those guards were no trouble for you. Yeah, thanks to you. Well, better set up those speakers while I can. Good luck. Tsukumo, could you say something through the speakers? Oh, uh, testing. Testing. Today's forecast calls for sunshine and heavy security. Perfect. Your speakers are awesome, Tsukumo. Almost like you're in the room. Does this mean your setup is complete? Yeah, I've pretty much done what I can. Uh. 
Huh? Oh, no, you don't. You stay your ass right there. Go get Yakun and the boys. I see you got security all riled up. They've been looking all over for you. Didn't think you'd be dumb enough to stay. Could have sworn I saw you earlier on lunch. Now, where have I seen that face? Oh, you're the guy from yesterday. The guy who stole my fucking phone! I'd say it's time for some payback. Don't lose heart, Yagamichi. I've already come this far. Right. I can get through this. Look, who the fuck are you and why are you in our school? No answer? You're only making this worse on yourself, you know? You here to swipe some girls in chain clothes or something? <clears throat> Does this mean we could beat the answers out of him? Oh, yeah. We'll end up as heroes for breaking this nasty-ass pervert. Sick! I always wonder what it'd be like to shatter a human bone. Whoa. What is this shit? This guy doesn't mess around, Yakun. We all need to take him at once. They'll label you as a sex offender. You don't want that on the news, do you? No, can't have that. <laughs> Only one way out then. Gone easier on them? Never mind those guys. You need to make yourself scarce. Unfortunately, you're on your own from here. The three of us need to make our exit now, too. We'll all regroup at the office, okay? I got it.
<laughs> oh, man. You almost got arrested and put on the sex offender list. There's no way I'd screw things up that bad. In all seriousness, those bullies got what was coming. I kind of wish you messed them up worse. That way, they'd never bother Kodasan again. Yeah, but that wouldn't really solve the problem. Not everything can be settled with a fight. What? Wow, look who's talking. But that's where those speakers come into play, isn't it? Yeah, if everything goes as expected. Hey, you did everything you could, right? So we'll see what tomorrow has in store. Yo, so are you gonna come out to lunch with us or what? Huh? Don't you have anything more to say than that, Coda? Get your ass up. Come on, Matsun's really not in the mood to deal with your shit today. I'll just eat lunch here, okay? Huh? You're giving us lip now? I guess you won't be needing this stuff then. <sighs> we told you to get your ass up, you little slut. Ah, oh, maybe you've started fucking guys on your lunch break now? <laughs> <laughs> You're out here living the dream, aren't you? <laughs> Enough! Get your ass up! What's the fucking holdup, Coda? You should be thanking us for even inviting you to come. So slow. I can't fucking stand you. Well, damn. So much for my appetite. You guys are making me sick. Hey, who the fuck said that? We're making you sick, huh? You guys talking about us? You see anyone else being assholes? Of course he's talking about you. Yeah, I've about had it with you punks. This shit's getting old. The fuck? Ganging up on the same girl day after day make you feel real big? Unfucking believable that it takes three of them to do the job. Seriously, you guys? You're taking Koda's side here? You know she's just a whore, right? You okay, Koda-san? Just ignore these losers. How low can you go? Calling someone a whore isn't gonna win you any points. Right? Let's hear it for the picture of purity over here. Uh, what the hell? Hey! She can dish it, but she can't take it. Hope the boys are watching. What? What the fuck, man? If you want to talk shit, say it to my face. What part of this don't you understand? Y yeah. You know what, guys? It's true. You guys just need to leave her alone. He's right. He's totally right. What's your problem with her anyway? Yeah, Koda didn't do anything wrong, guys. Exactly. So back off Koda-san already. Stop acting like little punks. Get the hell out of here. When you guys going to lunch, go choke on a chopstick. Oh, how does it feel now? Just get going, would you? Yeah. Toss them out. <sighs> what in the hell is going on here? Hey, Boxy. Fuck this. Yeah. Well, let's just go. Fuck it. I've never seen those kids band together like that. They all knew what was going on in there, though. It can be hard to speak up even when you know something happening right in front of you is wrong. 
Not so different from adults, right? Yagami-san, was everything we just witnessed part of your plan? It's just psychology. There's this concept called the bystander effect. According to the psychologists, when a person witnesses an incident, there's three things that run through their mind if other people are in the vicinity. One, if no one else acts, it must not be urgent. Two, if no one else acts, I don't have to take action either. And three, if I take action alone, I'll embarrass myself. The result? Everybody stands there and nobody takes action. I just figured if I could get even one person to step up and raise their voice, it would spur the rest of them to push past their inability to act. <laughs> Penguins are the same way. You ever seen a flock of them hesitating to take a leap into the sea? One takes the first plunge and the others all start following after him. The first penguin, you say? It's a fascinating term for a display of bravery. I've heard it said that overseas in America, the first penguin is a symbol of respect. So for Yagamishi, that would mean your voice was the first penguin in that classroom. I can't say for certain this resolved your bullying problem. But, here's hoping it's at least a good first step. They're gone. You should be safe from them for a while. What do you say we monitor the situation for now? Might not be wise for adults to intervene just yet. I suppose your plan has worked out for the better. But it should be teachers and administrators handling these matters, not detectives. You know what? I couldn't agree more. Then if you'll excuse me. Oh, come on, man. Lighten up a little. You didn't have to rub it in her face. You know what she thinks? She thinks we're some bums off the street trying to meddle in academic affairs. Well then, I apologize on her behalf. But Yagami-san, that was some magic you worked there. Hard to admit this at my age, but I learned quite a bit from what you did. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Good stuff, Yagami-san. <laughs> Naturally. I knew you would deliver. <laughs> huh? Sorry, I have to take this. Hey, this is Yagami. This is Shiosaki. Do you have a minute? Uh, sure. I have a rather urgent request for you. It concerns a trial we've been involved with. Listen, sorry, son. Uh, I'm a little busy. I don't know if I can take a rush job at the moment. We aren't even in Kamacho right now. Actually, I'm in Yokohama. Really? That's interesting. I'm helping Sugiura out with a case for his new agency. We're on site right now. At Serio High School. Uh, sorry, son? You there? Serio High? Somewhere near Ijincho? Is that the school? Hmm? Huh? Have you heard of it? A college-age student teacher from that school went missing about two months ago. It was all very sudden. Huh. I think I heard something about that, actually. He himself was a Seiryu High graduate. He'd returned to his alma mater to finish his teaching credential. Just a sec. How do you know so much about this? The teacher's name is Hiro Mikoshiba, and his body was discovered a few days ago. They found him in one of Ichincho's abandoned buildings. Huh? The body was badly decomposed, but Kanagawa police have just released his identity. Moments ago, in fact. Moments ago? This is gonna end today? Thing is, someone else knew Mikoshiba was dead, 
before the police even confirmed it. A sex offender, Akihiro Ehara. I defended him in court. The day Mikoshiba disappeared, Ehara was arrested at the station for groping. He's also an active duty officer. So you're saying he committed the murder too? No. The victim was still alive while Ahara was at the station in Tokyo committing sexual battery. He was caught and arrested on the spot. And he's been in jail for the two months since. So if I have this right, he has an alibi for the murder? Right. But there's more to it. A few days ago, someone lit flares at the location of Mikoshiba's body. It obviously couldn't have been Ahara, so I suspect that's the real culprit. But whoever that is, is somehow connected to Ahara. Yeah. Otherwise, there's no other way he could have known about the body. Exactly. There's clearly more to Ahara than an officer turned groper. More than likely, he's an accomplice to murder. Okay. So do we have a motive? Four years ago, Ahara's only son hung himself in their home. He was a student at Seiryo High at the time. And the way Ahara sees it, his death was the result of bullying at the hands of his classmate, Mikoshiba. You mean it's revenge? In that case, could he possibly have hired someone else to kill the guy in his stead? It's highly likely. As for my request, I'd like to see what you can find out. Mikoshiba's murder is too suspicious. Up until today, I wrote Ehara off as just another train groper. But he got arrested for that on the exact day that Mikoshiba was killed. It can't be a coincidence. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better alibi than being arrested for a different crime, right? Otherwise, the cops would have pinned him as suspect number one. But groping as an alibi? Why go to all that trouble? There had to have been a better way than that. I'm worried. As his attorney, I have to admit there's a chance Ehara planned this, which means I've made a critical oversight. Even worse, I let a misguided court issue a verdict. I can't allow that to stand. I need to reconsider both the harassment and the murder, because I think the truth is these cases are one and the same. All right, well, what can I do for you? Can you see if anyone at Seiryo High will talk about Mikoshiba? Right now, we need more information. And the first thing we should focus on is how and why he disappeared. That could give us a lead. So, does this mean you're hiring me? It does. Consider it an official request, if you would. Okay, I'm on it. <laughs> no better feeling than when the jobs line up perfectly. Ijincho, Yokohama, a harbor town where rotting secrets rarely stay uncovered. The deceased was a student teacher who had vanished from a high school Yagami was investigating. Yet the linchpin to this case, a police officer named Ahara, was arrested for a different crime, a train groping that shocked the nation. Upon hearing the verdict, Ahara gave the court an ominous revelation that the son he had lost was avenged. Before I go all in, can we go over the defendant's profile? That way I'll have something to work with. Sure. Akihiro Ahara, age 53, senior officer with Tokyo PD, convicted of sexual battery. He'd been stationed in Shinjuku and lived alone in Tokyo. That is, until his arrest. Lived alone? Unmarried then? His wife moved to Yokohama without him seven years ago, when their son Toshiro started at Seiryo High. Toshiro-kun ended up taking his life in his third year. That's four years ago if you're counting. And the couple never reconciled, huh? Apparently, his wife wanted nothing to do with him from that point on. That's it for personal details. All right. 
As for the charge, Ehar has maintained his innocence. We've had no luck getting him to budge. Mind you, the prosecution has plenty against him. Security camera surveillance, eyewitness footage, even trace evidence gathered on scene. The same footage the media was plastering on TV? Yes, although some of it was edited for privacy or length, but it painted a clear enough picture. Hard to dispute something you can see right in front of you. True. And what about when they handed down the verdict? Ahara flew off the handle or something? Yeah, that's one way of putting it. Your Honor, in a warehouse, about three days ago, a body turned up in Yokohama. The body belongs to a guy named Hiro Mikoshiba. Four years ago, this man took my son from me by driving him to commit suicide. Ehara seemed convinced that Mikoshiba had bullied his son, and to get his justice, he even took Seiryu Hai to court. However, the court ruled against him, claiming there was no substantial evidence of bullying. I still need to dig into the court record of that case to see if there's anything of value. Sounds like I'm on deck then. I've got someone involved in the case right in front of me. Who? The chairman of Seiryu Hai himself. Are you talking about me? I don't know how you pull these things off, Yagami-san. But let me give you a word of caution. I'm listening. Mikoshiba's murder hasn't been made public yet, so please don't go around talking about it, especially at his school. The Kanagawa police will investigate the school soon enough, and if they find out everyone already knows... <sighs> They'd show us the door, lock it behind them, then probably charge us with obstruction. Exactly. Oh, and before I send you the Toshiba's photo, there's one last thing you should know. What's that? Ehara's ruling was the day before yesterday. That means we only have 13 more days to potentially file an appeal. If we don't make our move, Ehara will walk out of court with a sex offense charge and a minor slap on the wrist. And once his case is closed, it would take a miracle to get it reopened even if there had been a critical oversight. Right. I'm sorry to give you a time limit instead of a viable solution. Don't worry. I'll have to make do. For now, let's just keep in touch. Thanks, and good luck. Yo, what was that about? <laughs> sorry, give me one more sec. Actually, Kaito-san, can I fill you in later? I need to get some answers from the chairman. Hmm? May I help you with something, Yagami-san? You sure can. Only thing is, where to start? Remember how you told me about a student teacher went missing? Oh, uh... This is him, right? Hiro Mikoshiba. How do you have that photo? But yes, that's him. I'd like to ask a bit about him, in relation to a separate investigation. What... What is it you need to know? Did something happen to him? I'm afraid I can't give you any details. This request comes from a very close colleague. I'm sure you understand. It's a matter of detective-client privilege. I know that isn't much consolation. But if it's any comfort, I would never disclose anything about your case either. But don't you see? Mikoshiba-kun was officially reported missing. Please, can you tell me something? I promise. I'll tell you everything I can when I can. But for now, let me ask the questions. Very well. Go ahead. I'll start with the basics. Mikoshiba-kun was a graduate here, correct? And that's why he came back to train as a teacher? That's correct. How long was he supposed to be here? Three weeks, originally. He'd nearly finished his time with us. But one day he simply stopped coming. It was as if all was well. Then, suddenly, he was gone. Or, at least, that's how I'd heard it. Were you two not that close? No. We would had barely exchanged a word since he arrived. Wasn't there a pretty dark rumor about Mikoshiba-kun four years back? 
Something about how he drove a student to suicide? You mean what was dredged up online? Yes, I'm aware of it. However, in the subsequent lawsuit, that rumor was put to rest. The court found no evidence of bullying. But you had your doubts, didn't you? So you called on us to take a deeper look. Well, uh, yes. But let's not get confused. The tragedy from four years ago does weigh on us. But we've washed our hands of the matter. Well, you say that, yet I can't help circling back to the same question. Why would the head of a school hire detectives to monitor his students in secret? Potentially even out of pocket? Well, for one thing, it would reflect poorly on our institution were I to openly suspect our students. Then there's the issue of bullying being recorded and shared online. You know what kind of firestorm that can cause. I should mention, I'm the one who takes the fall for it. My own privacy be damned. So of course I would opt for secrecy. That's fair. But what that still doesn't answer is why this is happening now. I'm not sure I follow. Could this be what riled you up? But... but this is... This is footage of Akihiro Ehara two months ago, captured up in Tokyo. The man was an active duty police officer, so of course it made the rounds in the media. But you already knew all that. After all, he's the one who sued your school on account of what his son endured here. Bullying that led to suicide. Well, that's... Uh... Undeniable. And now that he's in the spotlight, any more problems at Serio would lead people to start connecting the dots. Uh. The police would dig up that suicide in no time, regardless of whatever the court had ruled. They might even reach the conclusion you had covered the whole thing up. I get the feeling that's why we're really here, to prevent another mess on your hands. Oh, I see now. Our job's to sniff out any bullying, then you sweep it under the rug. That's simply not true. At least, that wasn't my intention. You sure about that? The thought never even crossed your mind? <sighs> Perhaps it did. The scenario you described was painfully accurate. Every time I saw Ihara-san on TV, I'd grow sick with worry that it could all boil over on us here at any moment. I can assure you, Chairman, I'm not here to cause any trouble. I only want to learn about Miko Shibaku. In that case, you should speak with Sawa-sensei. She was his teaching mentor. Her? Great. That's my luck. See? I told you we should have stayed on her good side. How was I supposed to know? Um, so, would you like me to call her back here? No thanks. I should go see her myself. Do a bit of smoothing over. In that case, you may want to go downstairs and see if she's in the faculty room. She should still be on lunch. Perfect. I've got another chance to shoot my shot. Sorry, Kaito-san, but I'm fielding this one alone. Tsukumo, you guys can clear out too. What? You're benching all of us? Just like that? I don't understand the meaning of this, Yagamishi. If I had time to explain, I would. Just trust me on this for now. I'm sorry, did you need something, sir? Oh. Uh, is Sawa-sensei here? She should be back shortly. May I ask who's waiting for her? Well, no one's special, really. I just need to have a quick word with her is all. Maybe you could tell me where her desk is? It's right over there. The one with all the English books. Thank you.
Okay. Suspicious. What are you doing here? I thought you'd have gone by now. Yes, well, I need to ask you a couple things. Such as? Such as how close you were to Hiromika Shiba. What? I heard from Chairman Okuda you were mentoring him as a teacher. I believe this was two months ago? Why do you of all people want to know? Did you notice anything unusual before he disappeared? Any sign of trouble he might have had? Uh, I can't say for sure. He just stopped showing up one day. Really, that's all I know. Uh, is that really all you can tell me? Nothing jogging the memory? I, I said that's all. <laughs> you know what, let's start over. Why don't we talk about him as a student? You were already a teacher here by then, weren't you? Mm-hmm. Back when a student here committed suicide, there were rumors online about how it could have been caused by bullying. And Miko Shibakun's name came up as one of the potential bullies. Yes, but those were just rumors. So he wasn't involved in any teasing? I teach English, and that's what I was focused on. So, as far as I knew, Miko Shibakun was a good student with solid grades back then. And during his time in training, I was under the impression he got along with the students just fine. He's not the type to bully then? I would say, no. Then why would those rumors exist in the first place? You're asking the wrong person. Four years ago, the court determined this school was not responsible for a bullying-related suicide. You mean Ahara-san's lawsuit? The father of the student who died and an officer in Tokyo? He was arrested the other day. Well, I'm sure you've seen the news. Yes, but what of it? What exactly is the point you're trying to make here? I believe Ahara-san still thinks his son killed himself because of Mikoshiba-kun. Let me ask you something, Yagami-san. By all means. What are you trying to accomplish? Didn't you finish this whole business with the chairman? If that wasn't enough, you got security called on you. You clearly have zero regard for anyone here. You should have had the sense to leave long before now. Believe me, once I learn what I need about Miko Shibakun, I'm gone. In that case, you've already got everything you need from me. Uh, one last question. You and the chairman both mentioned how Miko Shibakun got along with the students here. Anyone in particular that he was close to? Uh, the kids in the basketball club? Miko Shibakun was in that club back when he was a student. Apparently, he was showing up to their practices. The basketball club? That includes the gang from before, right? Yes. They all spent quite a bit of time with him. All right, with that, I'll get out of your hair. Appreciate your time, Matt. The Sawa sensei. Uh, just a minute! <sighs> Kaito san, you there? Tell me you're still on campus. Why? You suddenly decide you need me after all? Man, don't be like that. You enjoy playing teacher's pet with Sawa-sensei? You mean, did I enjoy getting eviscerated by her? She hates my guts at this point. That aside, I did get some interesting intel. And that's where you come in. Huh? What for? I want to find those bullies in the basketball club. Think you can fly the pigeon for me? 
So I do have a purpose. Ain't that something? All right, then. It's drone time. Thanks. I'll start scoping out the gymnasium. Close one. Almost got it. Huh? You're Kodasan from Class 2 too, right? Basketball too? Yeah. You have a second? I um, have some questions about a student teacher who taught classes here named Mikoshiba. <laughs> oh! <laughs> really? Yo, you read me talk? That posse of little shitheads just went strutting into the gym with some bats. Kaito-san. Can you at least try to warn me a little sooner next time? Why? Are you worried? Hey! Why are you still here, asshole? Who the hell are you, anyway? Talking pretty big for taking a cheap shot while my back was turned. You had it coming, shady old fuck! Coda! Hey, you been spilling anything to this guy? I didn't say anything. I'll fill you in. I was asking her about Miko Shiba, a student teacher who disappeared from school not too long ago. You guys know him, right? The basketball club would. Don't bother trying to talk to us like we're your fucking friends, asshole. I wanna bash your fucking skull in! You'll die before I tell you shit! You wiped the floor with us yesterday. Only fair for you to take a handicap. I don't mind at all. Sure. All good. But it's still gonna be pretty one-sided. You're so full of shit. I'm gonna kick your ass! Got a lot of guts for your age, kid. But come on. You really need a better outlet for all that aggression. Let me go! Just what on earth is going on in here? Hey. Let's roll out. I'm gonna do you a favor here and leave out the part about the bats. Huh? Are you even listening? Yes, ma'am. We were just horsing around a bit, right? <laughs> just horsing around is right. You really are unbelievable. Why are you attacking defenseless students on their school property? How many times must I tell you to leave our school alone? For what it's worth, the chairman asked me to be here. Oh, good. Let's drag him into this. How 
should our chairman explain you to the mob of irate parents that will be at his door any second now? Don't worry, there's a very good reason we hired these ragtag detectives to spy on and beat up your kids. Not the words I'd use. If I hear anything else about you, anything, I'm going straight to the press. I'm under no obligation to cover for anyone. Oh, and your attire is atrocious. When you show up at a school, at least try to look the part. Now go home! You hear all that, Kaito-san? I have a funny feeling I'm not wanted here. Can I talk to the chairman real quick? I'm afraid Sawa-sensei has made her point clear. Perhaps it's best you take your leave. After all, you've satisfied the bulk of my request. Wait. Okay, how about this? You can hire me on as a teacher. That way, I can stay on campus no problem, right? But you can't teach without a license. You don't happen to have one, do you? No, but I do have a lawyer's badge. How's that for certification? You're a lawyer? Well, that... Certainly is a respectable position, but it's not exactly a license to educate. Can't we work something out? I'm afraid something isn't specific enough. Although, there is always the off chance that you can serve as an outside consultant. A guidance counselor, perhaps. Oh, yeah. Like a club advisor. Do you happen to have a kung fu club? I've got a few tricks I could show some kids. No, there's nothing of the sort. And on that note, I believe each club already has an advisor assigned. That's unfortunate. Me again. I say it's time we hightailed it out of here. No use sitting around on our asses, right? Why don't you meet us back here and we'll go? I can't. Not until I find something for sorry, son. Suit yourself. <laughs> don't work too hard now. confirmed can I help you actually you already have I didn't think you'd be foolish enough to show your face around here again I'm sorry but do I oh they always say perpetrators return to the scene of the crime and you just proved the old adage true monsieur voyeur Your voyeur? What are you talking about? I'm talking about your pervy little upskirt scheme. Seriously, hiding a camera under the stairs and at your age? Shame on you, sir. Yeah, you lost me. Now, if you don't mind, I'm kind of in the middle of something. Oh, no, you don't. I have irrefutable proof of your crime. Why, the very shoes on your feet. You're wearing the exact same sneakers as the pervert from yesterday. And don't think they'll carry you to safety today. Oh. Okay, what is happening here? Sorry, but your evidence is my shoes? Everybody here's got shoes, young lady. In fact, I'm probably not the only person with this exact pair. Hmm. Your shoe style is merely the icing on the cake. You see, before the pervert arrived yesterday, 
I had covered the floor around the camera with a clear polymer that shines under black light. Huh? It's an oil-based substance, so it lasts a few days. Your souls are stained with it as we speak. Um... Uh... Which means you came bumbling back to the scene of the crime. While wearing the very evidence of your misdeeds. Lamenting your misfortune already? That's what you get for crossing the Mystery Research Club of Serio High. A Mystery Research Club? Now, if you'll follow me to the faculty room, monsieur. Oh, wait, just hold on, okay? There's no way I'd have noticed an invisible substance on my shoes. I'll give you that much. But even if I did step in some mystery goop, does that really prove what you're saying? With so many people on campus, any number of them could have walked over that spot. No, only the perpetrator stepped in the coating. I know this because I was there watching your fiasco. And of course, I had the PE teacher who was with me agree to serve as witness. Why don't you just give it up already? There's no escape, sir! I have even more proof of your crimes! Oh, my God. The camera may be gone. But fortunately, I snapped a photo of it before it got taken away. With that, I determined everything there is to know about your camera, down to the store where you bought it. Turns out it's an online exclusive, customized to capture high-resolution footage with an inconspicuous design. Were I to supply this information to the police, they would track down the owner soon enough. After all, the shop would have no choice but to cooperate with a police investigation. Do I need to spell it out any further? You, monsieur, are ensnared. Therefore, I think it would be wise to do what I say. Uh, let's say we have a chat. A chat? Yeah. Now, I can't give out any details, but having the cops on me would be extremely problematic. So, I'd like to resolve this as amicably as possible. Think we can come to terms here? I will agree to one thing only. Hearing the unadulterated truth. And make no mistake, I will not be misled by diversion, threats, bribes, sob stories. Nothing of the sort. Look at me. Do I really look like a pervert who'd sneak into a school for dirty pictures? Well, no, actually. Not at first glance. Right? So drop the Monsieur Voyeur. But I would be an utter failure as a mystery connoisseur to fall for such elementary misdirection. Uh, what? No matter where or when the story is told, the perpetrators in mysteries are often those who draw the least suspicion. This trope carries over into the real world as well, so the fact that you don't look like a criminal proves nothing. Really? If you think you can fool this mystery fiend, you'd better think again.
You're Kyoko Amasawa-san, right? President of the Mystery Research Club? So what if I am? I saw your flyer. Sounds like your club's in a tough spot. You're not wrong. Our current advisor got married and quit teaching, and we can't find anyone else to take her spot. On top of that, the chairman's been reluctant to bring in anyone from outside, so the MRC may be in dire straits. But your arrival marks our revival! Should I turn you in as a foyer, you would make a fine feather in my cap. You would also prove the value of the MRC, so the chairman would have no choice but to solicit an advisor for us. Well, that all sounds fine on paper, but the real-life logistics may not play out that way. You'll need a competent professional in your area of interest, but you think they have time for volunteer work? When you put it that way, it does seem like a long shot. Right? So here's my proposition. How about you make me your advisor? You? Advise the MRC? Why not? A Kamurocho-based detective not good enough? Uh, you're a detective? Oh yeah. I'm Takayuki Yagami from the Yagami Detective Agency. I was asked to come investigate your school. That's about all I can let slip. <sighs> so then, the hidden camera was for your investigation? I'll let you deduce that yourself. Client confidentiality and all that. But I will say one thing. I'm here to stop shady business, not start it. If he wasn't shooting up skirts, then what was he trying to see? Rather, who was he trying to see? Who put him up to it? Our staff? Ugh! So many variables! <laughs> Listen, I don't mean to interrupt, but... Hello? As I was trying to say, becoming your advisor could work out well for both of us. I'm not done here by a long shot, but one of your teachers is bent on seeing me gone. Really? Who? Sawa-sensei. She thinks I have no business being here, and frankly, it's been hard to prove her wrong. But, if I were to advise your club, It'd be all the reason I need to stay on campus. So what do you think? It's a win-win situation, wouldn't you say? Oh, and if it's experience you want, believe me, I've been around the block when it comes to mysteries. I... believe I understand. The purpose you stated for being here does fit the circumstances better than my original theory. But I will not be persuaded so easily. So, I propose a test. Test? Right this way, please. What? Hey! Who's this, sis? This is Yagami-san, our new advisor candidate. However, I intend to test him first. See if he's legitimate. Hmm. Eh, fine by me. I'm Kento Amasawa, Kyoko's younger brother. Also the MRC's bodyguard. When your sister's as nosy as mine, you've got to step up your game to keep her safe. Please have a seat, Yagami-san. After you. Oh, how kind of you. So, Amasawa-san, back to the topic at hand here. Could you tell me what the Mystery Research Club actually does? It seems like the advisor ought to know that. <clears throat> so... I founded the Mystery Research Club last year. Primarily, we function as a book club, critiquing mystery novels from many different cultures and eras. But, when the opportunity is ripe, 
we also engage in more involved activities. And by that, I mean solving the mysteries around us. Oh, you mean go sleuthing, like on a case. So that's what you were up to. I've got to say, as a potential advisor, I'm not exactly psyched to hear you go around looking for trouble. Oh, don't get me wrong. We don't do this for kicks, and I'm not a fan of danger. If we could all be armchair detectives, free to investigate from afar, surely that would be ideal. Yeah, don't I know it. Unfortunately, that is rarely, if ever, possible. Say our investigatory senses were to draw us toward a mystery that escapes even the school and the police. Why, letting such a case slip away would be anathema to our club's founding principles. While I do admire your passion, why put yourself at risk? You'd be safer handing it off to the authorities. Then shouldn't we hand you off to the authorities? Well, now, let's not be hasty. I take it you see my point then. Some cases aren't so cut and dry. You make some valid points. So, getting back to this test of yours. Ah, uh, yes. So, based on what you've told me, I'm inclined to drop your charges altogether. A detective setting up cameras is... believable. That being said, I'd also be a fool to take you at your word. If this is a ruse, I'd be unleashing a pervert on the school. Well, the caution is admirable. Then you shouldn't mind if I test both your skills as a detective and your character as a person. And once that's over, the club will reach a decision. We'll either accept you as our mentor, or turn you in as a deviant. I get the picture. So what does this test entail? Actually, we've been dealing with a rather risky case as of late. So your job is to resolve it. How risky are we talking? Well, it's about as risky as it is risque. Yagami-san, have you ever heard of a sugar baby? Huh? You mean a younger girl getting paid to date an older guy? You know it. Now our current case involves one such sugar baby. It seems that one of our dance club girls has grown a reputation for dating older men. Unfortunately, I've yet to pin down exactly who this is. All you know is she's in dance club? Well, I understand why you'd want to know more, but what about this warrant's investigation? Is she in danger? The issue at hand is that she may be doing more than dating, and it's putting her safety at risk. Well, we found this out online, so we're admittedly speculating a bit here. But apparently this girl's pretty infamous for what they call her vanishing act. Hmm. Care to elaborate? She strings the mark along, going on a few dates for an agreed-upon sum, but then she goes in for the kill. She gets a large upfront payment for promising to seal the deal, and then, poof, gone with the wind. Okay, I can see how that might make her enemies, but that's on the guy, isn't it? I mean, he's paying to date an underage girl, and he thinks he has the right to complain? You're not wrong. Problem is, her latest mark, a violent, foul-mouthed thug, isn't so self-aware. I believe rape and murder were his choicest threats. So yeah, we can't just write this one off. Oh, yeah. That's a concern. Mm-hmm. And now he has his gang roaming the streets, searching high and low for the girl who conned him. I'd say that establishes the risk clearly enough. As soon as we found out, we've been trying to find the sugar baby and warn her ASAP. Yeah, I get it now. If we don't act, she could be in very real danger. I think we're finally seeing eye to eye, Yagami-san. After all, the truly artful detective can solve incidents before they even occur. That's not quite how it works, but sure. In any case, now that the situation's clear, I'd like to get on with the test. Just tell me where to start, and I'll be there. It is said that the great Sherlock Holmes was able to freely change his appearance into that of a total stranger. From helpless old woman to shifty-eyed vagrant, he deceived the masses and never lost a lead, all thanks to a good disguise. 
So, you want me to go undercover? Yep. Any detective worth their salt should have no trouble with that. You're going to infiltrate the dance club as an advisor and return with a lead on the sugar baby. That is your test. Wait. You want me to teach a dance club? If it's required, then yes. I want you to win their hearts in ways I myself could not. Those girls are a close-knit group. They'd never trade gossip with someone like me. However, if a cool new stranger gained their trust, that's you, they might be more willing to talk. But how am I supposed to be a convincing advisor if I've never danced once in my life? That's okay. It's rare for their advisors to get up and do it themselves. They generally teach from a book. Oh, great. If it's any consolation, their current advisor never even shows up. So, you'll already have an in. Just give them a few pointers, act authoritative, and soon enough, you'll be their closest confidant. Easy peasy. Easy peasy? To teach something I know nothing about? I'm sure you can figure that out. That is, if you really are a detective and not some snaky imposter. <sighs> You're really putting me through the ringer, you know that? I guess I'll have to prevail with the power of vague advice. Good, then let's move. The dance club will be starting their practice any minute. They're in the gym basement, in case you didn't know. I know her test might be tough, Yagami-san, but I think you'd make a pretty rad advisor. So good luck. Huh? Oh. Shizono, I'd like a word with you. Hey, aren't you... Amasawa from the Mystery Research Club? You betcha. Don't worry, I come bearing good news. Oh great, the MRC. What do you want with us? We're not up to anything. Calm down, I'm not here to expose your secrets to the world. I only wanted to introduce you to someone. What are you getting at? To preface this, I noticed your club advisor hasn't been showing up much lately. Yeah, apparently he got really sick. We're lucky if we see him a couple times a month. Right, and it must be rough trying to choreograph an entire routine without him. Yeah, and we've got a meet coming up soon. It's so much pressure. I see. Then the stars really did align in your favor. Um, what? Listen, Senpai, I know we might seem desperate, but it's not like we need any favors. Don't worry, you don't owe me for this. I'm offering you a potential advisor as a token of goodwill. A potential advisor? <laughs> Let's not sweat the small stuff. The important thing is, Yakumi-san here said he'd agree to help you with your routine as a stand-in advisor. Help with their routine? When did I ever say that? Oh my gosh, really? This is just what we needed. You know, I can tell you had a certain something about you. So how long have you been a pro dancer? Uh, I'm not. <gasps> oh, so modest. This is like one of those dream come true moments in a movie. I've been literally racking my brain trying to come up with a workable routine. Oh. I'm so glad that's on you now. Whoa, 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 time out. I'm missing some important qualifications here. Yagami-san, this is your Reichenbach Falls moment. You need to dive headfirst into the challenge. Don't you get it? Uh, no? Um, do you think we can get started? 
We've been practicing and practicing, but something about our choreography feels off. We all know our moves and everybody's got rhythm, so all that should be left is bringing our A game. But it feels like we're still missing something, you know? That wow factor. It's really kind of down to the wire to be figuring this stuff out, but I know we'll push through if we try. Uh-huh. <laughs> so can I ask for your first impression? Does our routine need more going on, or...? Uh, you know, it's hard to say what's going on at this point. I shouldn't have to say this, but keen observation is elementary for a detective. And? And you need to tell them what you observed. You did have your eyes open, didn't you? Isn't your routine a little tame? Maybe you could spice it up a bit. Uh, uh, spice it up how, exactly? You mean like we need skimpy outfits? Or like we dance all provocatively? What part of this is a high school don't you get, Yagami-san? Uh, yeah, sometimes I just say things. So, the music's not a bad choice, but it'll take more than your average dance mix to stick in the audience's minds. Have you considered traditional Enka? Nobody'd see that coming. Uh, enka? Well, it is old school, so dancing to it might be innovative. Um, uh, but we can't just start over with a new song after all the hard work we put in. They have the rhythm, they know their moves, but what they lack is prep time. She told you all that, remember? Besides, it'd be demoralizing to make them reset everything this late in the game. Yeah, demoralizing. I think you guys could use a bit more coordination. Something's off about your rhythm. Really? I thought they were all pretty synced up. Uh, yeah, rhythm's actually one of our strong points. Oh, well, you know what, then? I think I had something in my eye. Oh, there we go. Let me take another look. I think your performance could use a little more flair. Flair? How so? Well, you're already in perfect sync, and everyone knows their part. But, how to put it? You were right. It needs something that's going to leave a lasting impact. I see what you mean. Maybe we are just kind of going through the motions here. If only we could come up with better stuff. Oh, maybe you could give us some suggestions. Oh. Let's take apart what could give you the edge you need. Why not incorporate Kung Fu? Uh, did you just say Kung Fu? Sure did. Throw a few kicks and punches, or knock the competition right out. That's actually not a bad idea. Yeah, and it's not like martial arts-based dancing is entirely unheard of. But we don't know the first thing about Kung Fu. Well, you're in luck. Kung Fu happens to be a hobby of mine. So cool! Well, it's my own style. You won't find it in any ancient scrolls. It's flashy. <laughs> Perfect! 
So will you teach us? I guess I'm gonna have to. Sweet! Then let's get a quick demonstration. <laughs> let's see some ass-kicking dance then. <laughs> Wait, really? I really have to do this? Of course. How else are we gonna learn? Look up some random videos? We'll get to analyze your moves, your footwork, your breathing. We'll learn from the pro. I wouldn't get your hopes up, though. What if my stuff doesn't fit your routine at all? So, you're not going to help us after all? That's pretty weak. If you're giving up after stringing them along this far, hang tight while I dial 110. Hold it. Huh? You know what? I think I can wing it well enough. I've never done this before, though, so don't get mad if it's crappy, okay? Oh, don't be so hard on yourself. You're gonna do fantastic. Okay, what we'll do first is show you the opening 30 seconds of our routine until the chorus hits. While you're watching, keep an eye out for the parts that could use some kung fu moves. Sure, good plan. Okay, so here's how we start. <sighs> and there, now you take it away. Oh, doubt I can top that. But you know what? May as well try. That's a spirit. Ready for the music? Freaking dance! skill and part pulling you out of your ass. I don't think a seasoned athlete could pull that off. Yagami-san, that was incredible. You're not just a pro, you're a master. Well, <laughs> you're giving an amateur way too much credit here. No way an amateur moves like that. You're something else. Maybe you don't realize it, but you have a gift for this. You're totally a born dancer. <laughs> I don't know about all that. What you call a gift, I call muscle memory. Well, whatever you call it, we're gonna use every last bit of it in our routine, if that's okay. <laughs> you seriously saved our necks just now, Yagami-san. Hey, I'm just glad it all worked out. Um, if it's okay to ask, could you drop by and give us more pointers sometime? Ever since our advisor stopped showing, we've barely been keeping it together. And we could all use some guidance from someone we can trust. If you guys will have me, then sure. Not sure I have many pointers left. Hmm. Oh, you're the best! I think it's time we headed back now, Yagmi-san. Huh? Oh, sure. So, did I pass? I'd say I made plenty of headway with the dance club. Indeed you have. Honestly, I'm still in shock over how easily you won Nishizono-san over. Every time I try to approach her, she reacts like I'm there to accuse her of something. Gee, I wonder why. I'm sure the MRC has gained some notoriety. Well, all the more reason we need an amazing advisor who can keep up with us. 
Wow, I'm amazing now. Does this mean I'm no longer a criminal? Yeah, I really should apologize for that at some point. Also, I have another theory as to why you installed that camera. Yeah? Let's hear it. So, a higher detective shows up to covertly monitor a specific group of students. Meanwhile, spreading through the news like wildfire is the case of Akihiro Ehara, a man connected to our school. Put those pieces together, and your objective here starts taking shape. But, I wouldn't want to hamper any important detective work of yours, so for now, I'll let that theory sit. At any rate, Yagami-san, I'll go ahead and let the chairman know of our arrangement. That is to say, I'll formally request you as our advisor. That'd be great. But do you really think you'll hire me just like that? Sure. So long as you're officially considered an outside guidance counselor, I don't see why not. Also, we do need another faculty member as a supervisor, but that's more of a formality than anything. Their only responsibility is signing the paperwork. You'll still be the one running the club. Our school makes you jump through a lot of hoops just to be welcomed as a guest, huh? Yeah, sounds like they won't let in just anybody. Anyway, is there a teacher you had in mind? Yep, no worries there. The chairman actually promised to sign off on whoever we chose. Well, I made him promise might be a bit more accurate. What? Really? Man, I wish he'd told me. He told me the club's already had advisors and left it at that. Typical. I doubt he wants to actually keep his word. After all, if we get into trouble, he'll be directly responsible. He probably thinks the MRC is a big enough liability as it is. <laughs> I wonder why. Well, with all that said, welcome to the Mystery Research Club. Can't wait to see a real detective in action. Hey, you'll get your chance, and it's a pleasure to be on board. When you have a spare moment, could you join us in the clubroom for a talk? I'd like your advice on another case we're monitoring. What, you've got something besides the sugar baby? Yes, and this one may actually be even nastier. In fact, the sugar baby may be but a single thread amidst a larger, more sinister web of conspiracies. But that's a lot to digest, I know. I'll get you up to speed when you're free. Okay. Not quite sure how to process that right now, but I'll make sure to swing by at some point. Hey guys, how we all doing? Sweating it out on some layups? Uh, who are you? My name's Yagami. I've been the MRC's advisor for all of a couple minutes, and I need to ask the basketball club a few questions. Okay. There was a student teacher who used to hang around here as recent as, what, October? Mikoshiba's the name. Oh yeah, Mikoshiba-san. Anyway, he stopped showing up out of nowhere. Any of you have any theories? Okay, scratch that. Then, what kind of teacher was he? Is he nice? Is he a jerk? I wouldn't say jerk, but he was... enthusiastic? Yeah, I mean, he did show up almost daily. The club was really good back in his day. That's probably why he had us hustling even harder than the coach. So, would you say he was on good terms with you all? I guess. Wait, where's Koda and them? Oh, from Class 2-2? I don't know. I haven't seen Matsu, Nakane, anyone. Something special about Class 2-2? <laughs> well, yeah. Koda's in 2-2, and she was Mikoshiba-sensei's star pupil. Star pupil? I do know who you're talking about, by the way. Are you saying she was favored over the others? In a way. 
Mikoshiba sensei worked her harder because she hadn't played basketball till high school. See, most of us already had tons of experience by the time we joined. So, anyone starting as late as now has to be really athletic to keep up with the team. Mikoshiba sensei knew that too. I'd say him looking after Koda did us all a favor. Wow, sounds like the model instructor. Ah, if you say so. But I'm not sure Koda felt that way. Oh? Mikoshiba sensei might have just thought it was tough love, but I think he went overboard with the teasing sometimes. Like, he'd make her shoot and then go, See? That was how not to do it. Are you saying he would mock her? Hmm, that makes it sound bad. He was doing it because he cared, I think? Hey, wasn't Mikoshiba sensei the one who started the whole arousing thing? <laughs> he said the way she held the ball was arousing. Said it was her main contribution. That's not true. She's got a nice chest, too. That's fair. Anyway, when Mikoshiba sensei stopped coming, the guys in 2 2 were all like, Okay, what did Koda do to him? Are you implying they had a relationship? Beats me. Mikoshiba sensei did anything like that, he would have gotten canned on the spot. Yeah, people like to gossip, but as they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. <laughs> Maybe Koda-san's the reason he was always so fired up. <laughs> Maybe she's the reason he got fired. <laughs> she was writing on her hand. It wasn't some random insult. Um, are we about done here? Last thing. Where are Koda-san and the others? Are they often this late? No. Everyone's usually here by now. Uh, maybe they're still in their classroom? Okay, then I think that about does it. Back to work for the both of us, huh? out on me? Look at me when I'm talking. You can't face us because you're weak. Who gave you permission to quit anyway? Newsflash, you're nothing without the club. Yeah, think about us for a second. Who has to pick up all the grunt work when you're gone? Maybe she feels special after what happened at lunch. Like people suddenly give a shit about her. Doesn't give you the right to ditch practice. Talk about selfish, am I right? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Is that all you know how to say? You think we're letting a stuck-up bitch like you give the orders? You guys still haven't learned to play fair? This fucking guy. Why is your dirty old ass still here? Attention students! Be on the lookout for a creeper showing up in your classrooms! If I were you... I'd watch my mouth around a club advisor. Say what? I'm Yagami, from the Yagami Detective Agency. And your chairman just hired me to advise the Mystery Research Club. Bullshit. I guess word hasn't gotten around? Maybe I'll let a few wisecracks slide for now then. But mark my words, I'll be here every day of the week. So be on your best behavior. <sighs> Uh, we better get to practice. Yeah, you do that. Oh, and, uh, break a leg out there, Matsu. Not very nice, are they? Are you alright? I'm fine. Kodasan. I'm sorry to spring this on you, but as I said, I'm a detective, and I need to talk about Hiro Mikoshiba. <sighs> he started training as a teacher here pretty recently, right? And one day he just stopped showing up? At the time, did you notice anything strange about him? Maybe he seemed troubled, or you saw him hanging around strangers? 
Why... Why are you asking me? The basketball club members think you and Mikoshiba might have been close. At least at practice. They said that? Well, I suppose there wasn't much truth to what I'd heard then. Don't sweat it. Just so you know, I'm actually gonna be hanging around here at the school for a little while longer. If it's cool, I hope we can find a way to be friends. See ya. Wait a sec. Earlier today, it was your voice that I heard, wasn't it? I just... never expected anyone to actually stand up for me in school. But you could say I didn't really stand up to them for myself much either. We all just treated it like it was a normal thing. Sometimes people would even laugh about it. But then, today, you guys something just changed. To leave her alone. Everyone suddenly decided to take a stand like they'd seen enough. I couldn't believe it. But that first voice, the one that told them to stop, that was your voice, wasn't it, Yagami-san? <laughs> Who could say? I knew it! It was you. Thank you so much for that. Today was... eye-opening. I never realized... I never thought about how horribly I was being treated until everyone stood up for me. What's more, it made me see that I was strong. In fact, I finally stood up to the basketball kids. So you did? Is that what made you decide to quit the club? Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to play basketball in a real team. I used to read this manga that made it look so cool. In a comic, even if you're a terrible player, the team always tries to lift you up. I tried. I wanted it to work, even if all they did was tear me down. But today... I just up and quit. That's not cool at all, is it? You did nothing wrong, Kodosan. Truth is, there's a lot of injustice in the world that goes unseen. And some people decide it's easier to be part of the problem than be part of the solution. The kind of people who only feel joy when they see others in pain. You can only do so much to make people see the light. At some point, you've just got to let them go. You know what I mean? Then there's no shame in quitting. But Yagami-san... I think you can only say that because you're such a strong person. Hmm... Okay... In that case... We won't call it quitting. Huh? You can play. It doesn't have to be with the basketball club. If you practice, you wouldn't even need a school basketball club to get to where you want to be. If this sport is what you want to do with your life, I guarantee you there's going to be a path for you to take. And all you have to do is find that path. I mean... It's gotta be out there, and then you don't have to call it quitting. I don't know about that. Are you sure? I mean... Wouldn't that be cheating? <laughs> Come on, try to work with me here. So... VMRC, you're the advisor? Yagami-san? Yeah. If you need anything, you just let us know. Anything at all. For example, if you hit any more trouble with those basketball club kids, you find me. Sure. You've got this. Mr. Detective? Yagami-san, right? Yeah. Shouldn't you be at practice with everyone else? Yeah, well... Remember Matsun and Sakaki? You know, the two other guys I'm always hanging around? They're ready to talk to you about Mikoshiba-sensei now. Huh. Well, Detective, I think they have a lead for you. 
Hey, you're here on some kind of case, right? You know, Mikoshiba Sensei talked to us pretty often. I think maybe we can help. That is, if you wouldn't mind starting fresh with all of us. Oh, turning over a new leaf, are we? We kinda have to. How else are we gonna get good college recommendations? It would really bite us in the ass if you went and narked on us, so... Will you at least hear us out? Matsun and the rest are just upstairs. Please, be a nice guy. We're really sorry. Okay, I see where this is going. How many guys are up there waiting to jump me? The next floor up is for third years, right? You rope some of your senpais into this too? Wow, you don't even know us and you're throwing out accusations like that? How are we supposed to become upstanding citizens with teachers like this? It's just not fair. Fine, I'll hear you out. Tell your friends I'm on my way. Really? Awesome! Over here, Yagami-san! Sorry to drag you all the way up here for this. You wanted to talk to me? About Mikoshiba-sensei? What? I can't hear a word you're saying, man! Why don't you come closer so we don't have to shout? Yeah, let's get this over with. <laughs> <laughs> So many of you. You guys all know Mikoshiba-sensei? Nah, that's not how our senpai friends roll. They know the Yokohama Liumon. Yokohama Liumon? You mean the local gang? Hell yeah. I've got a friend who's in deep with those guys. I scratch their back by bringing them chicks to hang out with, and they scratch mine by tipping me for it. <laughs> it's a pretty sweet deal, actually. Also, We've got a little thing going. I get to drop the Liumong name if I need him to handle some business. So you sell them girls in exchange for honorary membership? You need to find better friends. Don't talk to me like you know me. I stay on their good side and I get my personal bodyguards. I work with the tools I've got to get to the top. So you got it all figured out, don't you, kid? But you're missing the big picture. They're gonna turn the table so fast you won't know what hit you. I'll keep that in mind, but I wouldn't worry about me right now. You're the one who's got the real problem on his hands. You get it? From now on, if you even lay a finger on us, you offend the Yokohama Liumang, and they'll take that personally. You see what deep shit you're in here, Yagami-san? So how about it? You know how to say you're sorry? Cash for our pain and suffering. Oh yeah? How much are we talking here? Grand? A mill. If you're short, I'd be happy to hook you up with a loan shark. I know a guy who lends for the Seiryu clan Yakuza. First it's gang, now it's the Yakuza. Keep bringing adult shit into this, I'm gonna start treating you like one. Huh? You wanna see what happens to gang members? I'll show you. You sure you wanna do that? We're gonna charge you extra. Oh, you got this shit down, Matsui. Let's take this asshole down! Fuck him up!
this. Cheap shot. <laughs> Can't see? Got you now! No, you don't! Huh? What? Did he just jump off? Nah. He's just hiding in the dark. Like a scared little cockroach. You guys go look for him and tell me when you find him. I'm going for a smoke. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> you got this in the bag. Uh, Senpai, what do we do? You guys follow me. We'll all smoke together till we get an update. Sure, I'll come with. Senpai's the toughest around, and the coolest. Ah, well. All for my adorable little underlings. Tastes good, senpai? Smoking a cigarette in the classroom? <laughs> so you came all this way just to get your ass kicked. Hey, Akane! Go get the other senpais! Uh, okay, I'm on it. You guys better watch out. If your teacher busts you smoking, won't you get in big trouble? On the other hand, you guys could use a lesson in manners, and I'd be happy to teach you. Huh? What the hell? Bastard! So this is where you were hiding! <laughs> now what? And that mouth of yours won't get you out of this! I'm taking you down! Don't give me that smug look!
<sighs> Jeez. This guy's a maniac. He's too good at this, man. Hey. You mentioned compensation for pain and suffering. Uh, that still sound like a good idea? No, we were just being stupid. C could you maybe forget all that? Then from here on out, we're buds, right? Ow! Ah, my shoulder! Holy shit, that hurts, Yagami-san! Tell me everything you know about Mikoshiba. After all, you guys were pretty close, right? Mikoshiba sensei showed up to practice, like, basically every day. Kind of a pain in the ass, if I'm being honest. As soon as our coach would leave, it's like a switch would flip and he'd start drilling us. He'd make us do, like, ten sets of cross-court dashes. And if even one of us lagged behind, it meant ten more. For all of us. That made it obvious real quick. Koda was our weakest link. So Mikoshiba was especially harsh on her, then? Yeah, because she's such a freaking klutz. Even the first years got sick of her eventually. <laughs> Only thing she did right was unite the team against her. You gang up and belittle a single defenseless girl, a beginner in your sport, and you call that unity. Real classy. Listen up. Mikoshiba's parents have reported him missing. Foul play could be in the works here. He's been gone for far too long. Hey, you think maybe Koda did it? Some kind of crime of passion? This isn't the time for bullshit. Or you want to keep going? Uh, nope. I'll pass. Have you talked to Sawa sensei yet? He probably knows Mikoshiba sensei better than anyone. All she told me was how exemplary he was, both as a student and a student teacher. And that he looked out for you guys, out of some sort of camaraderie. Huh? She really talked him up that good? Why, something off about that? Uh, it's just... Sawa-sensei was really cold to him. No matter what he'd do, I actually brought that up to him one day. And it turns out the rumors were right. Rumors? Back when Mikoshiba-sensei was a student, one of his classmates apparently committed suicide. And Sawa-sensei suspected him of bullying the kid. I don't think he ever really got past that. He'd get all depressed sometimes. Really? Sawa-sensei thought Mikoshiba was a bully? Oh yeah. I actually asked him about it once, but he just laughed it off. I teach English, and that's what I was focused on. So, as far as I knew, Mikoshiba-kun was a good student with solid grades back then. And during his time in training, I was under the impression he got along with the students just fine. What did she really think about Mikoshiba? I'll have to press her on it. Hi there. Has Sawa-sensei gone home? Actually, she's in a meeting with the chairman. So then she's at his office? Yes, but I think they may have some visitors. Gotcha. Thanks. Thank you. 
かった。Yagami-san, those men are with the Kanagawa police. They said they're here to make inquiries about Mikoshiba-kun's disappearance. And they asked to see Sawa-sensei too? Yes. But I have to ask, can you tell me what's really going on? You were asking questions about Mikoshiba-kun as well. I should leave it to the police to fill you in on that. I mean... Their sources are probably more recent than mine. They should have the latest details. Mikashubakun is... no longer with us, is he? Then it's just as I feared.